Milwaukee is known for hoops and horses, but forget about the white fences that line the Bluegrass State. These white walls are the only things containing the horsepower tonight. In our last race, the winning ticket belonged to Travis Quapple. He's found his stride and is charging towards the thoroughbreds who are out in front. But they are paddock veterans, and they are all ready to run wild tonight on speed. Located almost exactly halfway between Cincinnati and Louisville, the Kentucky Speedway is more than a racetrack. For the NASCAR star fans of this area, it's the fast track to racing dreams. We mentioned basketball. Get ready for the pass. You are about to be set up. Hello and welcome to The Setup, I'm Krista Voda. Every week you tune into the show and I know what you're thinking. You're wondering what makes this race any different than the last. Unbridled unpredictability. Two and three wide racing, last lap passes, perhaps an unexpected winner. That is what you're in store for tonight. But before we talk about the racing, we need to talk about something else unexpected, a pretty big headline from one week ago. Last Saturday, NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series driver Aaron Fike and his fiance were arrested and charged with possession of heroin and drug-related instruments following suspicious activity in the parking lot of a Cincinnati area amusement park. Fike is the driver of the number one red horse racing Toyota, the current rookie points leader and eighth in the truck series standings. Well, he will not hold those positions after tonight. Fike has been suspended indefinitely from NASCAR for actions detrimental to stock car racing. Now, Fike has pleaded not guilty to the charges. He has been released from jail pending his next court date, which will be next Thursday, July 19th. His suspension from NASCAR is indefinite, but we do know he is out of the ride for the rest of the year. Ray Dunlap has been following the story and has the latest. Ray? Well, Krista, I think it's very important to remember that Aaron Fike is still innocent until proven guilty. But I talked to a lot of members of his Red Horse Racing team, and they said there were certain times that they felt like Aaron acted a little bit weird. But everyone on this team said that at no time did they ever think that he had used any kind of illegal substance at any time that he was physically at a racetrack. Now we asked the team owner Tom DeLoach to come on the setup show and talk to us about this situation. He declined saying that it's still an ongoing investigation. But we do know this, there's a new driver of the number one and it's David Green and he's standing by with Adam. And Ray, David Green will be in the one truck for the remainder of the 2007 season. The last time you raced one of these machines, 10 years ago. So what kind of adjustments to your driving style to get ready for tonight, David? Uh, I've had to change a lot with my personal driving style here at Kentucky. I know JJ and all the guys here on the Red Horse team have worked diligently on, in a short period of time here to, to kind of get me adapted, but the things have changed a lot. And uh, But I can't say enough for Toyota and, and our great sponsor, RFMS, and everybody involved. And I can't go without saying as well, you know, our hearts and prayers are out with Aaron and his family on a tough situation here. But this is a great little race team. and. I've been very impressed in the week I've been around them and coming here and they, they welcomed me with open arms. But man, I'm telling you, these trucks are a lot different. I got a lot of respect for all these guys driving. I'm honored to be here in the Craftsman Truck Series tonight. And hopefully we can put on a good show for, for all the Toyota folks and, and put our Tundra up front. David Green's first career Truck Series start, 1995, as a teammate to Ron Hornaday at Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. He rolls 13th here tonight. Krista? All right, thanks, Adam, a Kentucky native. No doubt David Green will be a sentimental favorite. You know, at our last race in Memphis, there was a little bit of sentimental favoritism, not because it was a hometown kid, but because it was a kid getting a big break. Brad Keselowski went from being unemployed three weeks ago to filling in for a former champion, Ted Musgrave, to nearly winning the race. This is the biggest day of Brad Keselowski's life. As a driver, I feel like I've paid a lot of dues over the last two or three years, running in lesser equipment, just trying to survive. There's a lot of young talent out there that'll never get the right opportunity. And you know, Brad did a great thing because he capitalized on the situation. Brad Keselowski has shown what he can do on the racetrack, even if he doesn't find the checkered flag. You know, just by not giving up, I think that's how I got this far, you know, even when uh, the cards were down. Brad Keselowski was able to get by that six of Travis Quaffle, and so now back in front of the field. 
it just all clicked. I mean, it's sometimes that chemistry is there and you can't really explain why, and this week it, it was there. Unless he gets some, some trouble in traffic or something like that, it looks like he's headed towards a victory. I could feel my leg just kind of shaking up and down a little bit, and I uh, thought, hmm, I must be a little more nervous than I thought I was. Travis Bumper all over the back bumper. These two racing so hard out in front of the field. I really didn't see where I made a mistake. He was faster, and um, I don't know, he just ran in the back of me. And he's been in he's the spotted. red jack. The nine is around. Contact with the six. Man, when you're up there on the wheel and you drove as hard as that kid did all night long and raced to get the lead and you feel that, that chance of victory, but we'll never know now. But nonetheless, what a great job by Brad Keselowski. What happens, happens, you know. I watch a replay a few times and hard to drive them things with the back wheels off the ground. He could have just spun all the way around instead of 180. I think he could have finished second still. You know, pretty cool. But well, I could have pulled a 180 uh, at an active show with 10 more to go. <laughs> Got a return to favor. Pretty damn close. Real damn close. Don't get much closer than that. Right now I'm just kind of trying to take it one day at a time and make the smartest decision I can. You know, I don't know where my future is. I really feel like I have unfinished business in the truck series. You can really see the emotion, but you know, regardless of the finish, the right eyes saw that run. Brad Keselowski getting a three-race deal with NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Bush Series team. And you know, Phil Parsons called it. He said that was going to be the most important night of Brad Keselowski's life. Phil and Rick Allen are upstairs getting ready for tonight's race. But guys, what a great event, a great turnaround for a great guy like Brad. Yeah, Phil mentioned it, the biggest opportunity of his life. And I tell you what, with all the pressure that was on that kid's shoulders in that race, he stepped up and really showed a lot of people what he had inside. Well, he really did. And not only did he do a great job on the racetrack, but he did a good job after the race. After the bitter disappointment of losing that race, he did a great job in his interview. And in the subsequent days, he did a good job. And as Krista mentioned, it turned into a three-race opportunity with Dale Jr., and he's already making the most of it. He finished 14th today at Chicago in the Bush race, the second highest finishing non-cup regular. So it's already paying dividends for Brad. Yeah, for his family, they're such a tight-knit racing family. Actually, his brother, Brian, won a race at Berlin the very next week after he had such a great performance at the uh, the race there in Memphis and so that family is really celebrating right now these past two three weeks so really an amazing turnout for the Keselowskis let's go down to Ray Dunlap and Ted is back at the racetrack here at Kentucky Ted you had a week off tell me did you watch the race when we were at Memphis oh yeah definitely you got to support the team and I got to ask you what in the heck is a painted horse now there's there's different kinds of horses, quarter horses, there's Appaloosas, there's paints, Pintos. What's painted? I don't know. All I know about <laughs> is trucks. But anyway, you have a very good race truck here this weekend. Uh, good qualifying effort. You got a good enough truck to win tonight? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, in practice, it was really good. It was a top three truck all along and uh, just got a little tight off turn two trying to go for the pole. But uh, yeah, I think we wound up seventh. Truck's in good shape. Uh, it's the oldest one in the fleet, but it still runs good. Okay, go get him. That's Ted Musgrave back at the track here at Kentucky. Adam? Travis Quapple back at the track coming off a win at Memphis. Went to victory lane for the second time in the last three races. The other at Michigan where you won in this truck starting seventh tonight. What's your confidence level? I got a lot of confidence right now. Our K&N team's brought it. This, uh, this truck's been strong for us all year. And, uh, you know, it's Ford sponsoring the event. So there's a lot of pressure to go out there and do a good job. And um, I'm excited about it. You know, I think uh, we really hit on some stuff in, in the end of happy hour. Really picked up some speed in our, in our F-150. Uh, I think we'll definitely be a contender. We just need to keep it clean and keep have a smart race, good pit stops, uh, just like we did at Memphis, be there at the end, and uh, I think we'll be knocking on the door. Four truck series starts for Travis Quapple here at Kentucky, two resulting in top tens, and he rolls seventh tonight. Krista? All right, thanks, Adam. Earlier this week, the NASCAR community was hit with some tragic news. A plane carrying the husband of ISC President Lisa France Kennedy crashed in a suburb of Orlando. Dr. Bruce Kennedy, NASCAR pilot Michael Clem, and three other victims on the ground died in the accident. Four others were injured. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all the families affected. Also this week, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series lost one of its own. Flagman Dennis James passed away on Wednesday. Been involved with racing for over three decades. He'd been our starter in this series since 2003. Dennis, you will be sorely missed.
Welcome back to the setup. This is the official midpoint of the season. 12 races in, 12 more to go after tonight. But this is big for another reason, because for the first time, Michael Waltrip is at a standalone event. It only took you like three years, but finally we got you out here. Well, uh, Kentucky's my hometown, or my home state, and uh, this place feels like my hometown. I've tested here a hundred times, run a couple of bush races here. Chris, I just Chris, appreciate get the mic track has Chris, fans. Get the you know, there's fans. You want to switch? Yeah, but we're going to do a little. We're not right. I like this track. Hello? Hello? I'm there? I thought you were going to start singing when I handed the mic. I had like this flash that was going to turn into a concert. But that's right. This is your home state. And, and, this, and this track has fans, Krista. People love coming to watch cars or trucks run on this track. And that's why you see such tremendous crowds. And the action is never disappointing. You never know what you're going to get, but it's always going to be wild. All right. We're going to get your mic worked out. But in the meantime, we've already seen some amazing stuff, not just at this track, but this year. Like we said, just a dozen races in. Here's a look at what you've missed so far. All right, listen up. For those of you that have been sleeping, it's time to wake up and take notes. It's been a roller coaster of a year in the Craftsman Truck Series, so pay attention. Daytona kicked things off with one of the closest finishes in Truck Series history with a dogfight for the ages. Jack Spring powers by. Talk about a photo finish. Mike Skinner and the number five team taught us the definition of dominance with three straight wins after Daytona. Celebrating three in a row now for Mike Skinner. Just when it looked like Toyota could sweep the season, two-time champ Ron Hornaday smoked up victory lane twice in his Chevrolet. Ron Hornaday did donuts into victory lane Fellow Chevy driver and short track ace Dennis Setzer stunned the field without pitting. Pit strategy wins the race in Mansfield. The Roush boys flex their muscles with a set of their own trophies. Eric Darnell wins here in Kansas. Guapo will win his second race at Memphis. 2006 champion contenders Todd Bodine and Johnny Benson reminded everyone that they're still a threat every race. Four champions claim the top of the points. With 13 races to go, the ride is in full swing, so hang on and pick your favorite. So after all of that, here's how the Ford Point standings sit. Get it standing, sit, bad joke. Skinner is having a season like Jeff Gordon, but Gordon's lead is almost 300. Skinner's lead is just over 100. And look at all of the former champs up top. The first four have won the title before. Sprague, another guy who's won a championship or three. Ted Musgrave fell from sixth to tenth after missing the Memphis race. And Ray, I think you're standing by with a guy who would love to win his first title. Well, tonight's certainly a big night for Ford when you come to Kentucky. This has been a racetrack that you're always good at, but not good finishes. Why? Well, I finished second here last year. All I got to do is pass one more truck here tonight for the Built Ford Tough 225, sponsored by the Greater Cincinnati Ford dealers. And uh, I'm driving that Ford Power Stoke Diesel International. Mike Bliss already asked me where was I going. I said, I'm going to the front. All right, that's where we expect to see you. Rick Crawford, always good here at Kentucky. Adam? And for Ryan Matthews, a big smile on his face. Why? First career pole today and only a seventh truck series start coming off a career best win a couple of weeks ago at Memphis. You've got to be feeling good, my man. Yeah, things are going real good. You know, we're getting better each week and communication between me and the team just gets better and better. And I just want to thank Bill and Gail Davis, you know, for giving me this opportunity. I'm pretty much a nobody coming in this, got no NASCAR experience. So it's just really cool that, that they had the faith to even let me try. And, you know, Doug Wolcott and the team's just been awesome. I mean, they work their tails off. I mean, I, I don't give up on them. They don't give up on me. And, you know, each week we're getting better. And I think the results are starting to show. And he knows what winning a poll is all about. Why? Because Mike Skinner, his teammate, who's won countless polls, just came over and told him what that lonely walk across the stage is all about. Ryan Matthews enjoying the view from the front tonight, Krista. All right, thanks, Adam. Yeah, the walk is lonely, but who wouldn't want to take that walk? What do you think about Ryan Matthews on the pole, Michael? The, the most amazing thing happened here today. The first four trucks all ran the same hundredth of a second. 22.7 point. I mean, they were all just the same. I can't believe how close it was. That's the closest qualifying in the history of any racing sport in the world, I bet. Let's get our people on it to research it. Guarantee you, no four, close, no four trucks have ever qualified any closer. I'm so excited we have people. That's exciting. We've got more exciting stuff coming up, too. Michael Waltrip's going to stay here. And listen to this. You know, Ken Schrader, he's raced at like 350 different racetracks. Memphis was not one of them until two weeks ago. He added that to his list. And now he's adding Kentucky. Ken Schrader has a rookie stripe on his truck. That's something you don't see very often. Wait till you see what else we have. More from the Built Ford Tough 225 coming up.
John Wood will see the checkered flag from Dennis James and win his first ever NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race. John Wood will win in Virginia. Electrifying the crowd, John Wood climbs out of the number 50 to celebrate with his hometown friends. Welcome back to the setup from Kentucky. Yes, we have a new face in the field tonight. Well, sort of. John Wood hasn't been back full-time truck racing since three seasons, 2004, but he is back tonight. In fact, he's back to racing in general after um, having to sit out a few races. Well, this week, Ray took in the Rays out on the boat on the lake with John Wood. The story is this week's Ray Report. <laughs> John, you're coming back to, to race in the trucks this week at Kentucky, but you've had five weeks off of racing. How tough has that been? Uh, pretty relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, it, it, it's been a struggle, I tell you. You know, since the onset of, of, of all this stuff, and, you know, I remember back in Dover when I left the racetrack on Friday, I guess getting to this point didn't really seem realistic, and getting back into a race car, it was, it was just so frustrating. They got Mark Martin out there helping him today. Just run you about four or five laps, get a feel for it. How are you feeling right now in, in the big picture? Great. Big and strong, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I feel fine, I tell you. Um, you know, it, 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 it's funny um, how you evaluate yourself when you do have time off. You know, you're away from a stressful environment, and I've gained a lot of weight. I've put on like 20 pounds, which Kind of hard to well, yeah, you only weighed 47 yeah, right. to start with. So, John, as you get back behind the wheel, what does it take, I guess, for a little confidence builder for you right now? I mean, I, I, I certainly put high expectations on myself, and you know, there, there's already a high level of expectation that's established with the race team. Mark Martin has gone with the lead. So, I look for success, and I, I don't really see any reason as to why we won't have any. It's just a, a matter of getting back and getting in the rhythm of doing it. You know, I hear a lot of drivers say, yeah, it's cool to run in the Bush Series when there's 15 cup guys there. Maybe you can learn from them. Uh, is that really true? Uh, you know, I'm not going to say that the Bush Series is is uh, not a good place to be right now, but um, it's just the miniature cup series. Uh, finishing 15th is an accomplishment because right. 14 guys in front of you are going to race on Sunday. The, the, the reality of it is the Bush Series is its own series. It's just swarmed with cup guys. Cup level is the, the premier level of racing, and trucks is where you want to go if you want to knock the fender off. You know what I say? I say go get them. That will be fun. All right, cool. And there's no doubt John Wood will be running some Nextel Cup races later on in the year, but John, a lot of people are saying, why back to trucks? What's the real deal? Aren't you glad to have me back? Sam? I'm glad to have you back, pal. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about it. Truck racing's where I started, uh, you know, with Jack Roush several years ago, and um, it's the grassroots of racing, it really is. It's, uh, it's where all the action's at, and um, these trucks are tough. Um, it's cool to be here for the, the Cincinnati Ford Dealers 225, I guess it is. So, um, you know, it being a Ford-sponsored race, it, it gives an added incentive. Well, you're starting way back, so you got a chance to go knock some fenders off, so go get them, all right? Thanks, man. I do have a good truck. I will have to say that. Everybody's worked really hard, and, um, you know, where we start has no reflection of where we'll end up tonight. I'm, I'm very confident. Okay. On his way to the front, that's John Wood. He's back in the seat of the number 21. Adam? And already some adversity today for Jack Sprague. A very good race truck. Third on his first qualifying lap, but loose on the second lap. It got away, hit the wall. So you go to a backup and start from the back. What's it going to take to make your way through the field tonight, Jack? Well, fortunately, I've got a really good race team. And I think the world of these guys, these Conway Freight team, just uh, I hate I, I put them through what I put them through today. I've killed them. And uh, that's been a long time since I've done that, since 03, since I've had to pull a backup out of any sort. But just got away from me it was really kind of a weird deal I wasn't expecting it and I couldn't catch it and usually I can but uh, we don't have any bad trucks so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that the Conway Freight Tour they pulled out of the truck will be good and kind of excited I mean if it's as good or better than the other truck I had it could be dangerous but uh, like I said I think the world of my guys will just see what we got right off the bat and uh, if it's not good we'll adjust on it but I'm, uh, I'm not too disappointed at this point. I'm pretty excited. I think we'll have a great truck. Tough start to the day for Jack Sprague. If you're wondering why he's smiling, he got married to fiance Amy last week. Everyone at Speed Krista offers their congratulations. That's right, Adam. And there we see some photos of the wedding that took place July 3rd at Hilton Head, South Carolina. So 
Jack owes his wife Amy a wedding present, and what better way to do it than with a win at Kentucky? Michael Waltrip sitting on the desk with us, and Michael, what kind of race are we going to see? Well, if you watched on speed last night when the ARCA cars took off, they all started running into each other. Don't be surprised if you see that again here tonight. These trucks will be very difficult to handle for five or six laps when they throw the green. And by the way, that's the best time to pass. So you want to go as fast as you can with a truck that's basically out of control. I love starts of races, especially when I'm watching instead of in them. Well, you, yeah, you just said, so be really fast and take care. of. Yeah, that's a contradiction, but that's what we're going to see. They, there's so many oxymorons that a race car driver either hears or thinks. I'm both, maybe. Both, both. We got to let you go. Rick Allen's going to have my hide if I don't get you up to the booth right now. So we're going to say goodbye to you. Thank you very much. Get out get out of here. Go, go, go. I like Taylor Hicks, though. That's right. Taylor Hicks, an American Idol. He's going to join us. He is, so we're losing Michael, but we're gaining Taylor. So we'll have that for you right after this. Welcome back to the setup from Kentucky, and we have a very special guest with us, the winner of American Idol number five. Now he's an author, recording artist. He's on tour. We're talking about Taylor Hicks, and you grew up in Birmingham, so that's near Talladega. Are you a race fan? Yes, I was actually talking to the to the guy who drove me down here. I, I played in the infield at Talladega, and uh, I've been keeping up with NASCAR and even a little bit of the truck races for for a while now. If you survive the infield at Talladega, that's impressive. And you know now, now you're on tour. You're autographing everything. That's what race driver, you know, race car drivers do. Have you had to sign anything crazy? Have you seen anything crazy out here? I can't tell you on television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. I've, I've had a great time here in Kentucky. Well, tell us too. You're the tour just started. Where are you going next? Well, I'm on summer tour right now. A book just came out, Heart Full of Soul, and uh, I'm touring, touring the country, playing music, playing soul music. All right, he's going to be up next week in Louisiana or Mississippi, I think. So if you live in those areas, make sure and check him out. Taylor, thank you very much. we got to let you go. Soul Patrol, we got to let him go sing the anthem. That's coming up next when the built tough Ford Tough 225, presented by the greater Cincinnati Ford dealers on speed, comes up next. synonymous with horses and tonight we're going to see some horsepower here at the Kentucky Speedway. Welcome to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series built Ford Tough 225. Hello everyone, I'm Rick Allen alongside of Phil Parsons. Michael Walter will join us as soon as he gets out of the infield and sign an autographs with Taylor Hicks. But let's talk a little bit about this race. Phil, this has been an amazing day as far as qualifying goes. You mentioned nine one, or seven one thousandths of a second separating four trucks at the front of this field. Yeah, as Michael was talking about during the setup show, incredible competition here in the truck series and here at Kentucky Speedway. Such a great racetrack here though. Very raceable, very wide, at least two lanes, maybe even three wide racing here at Kentucky. What is does it make I mean what does this racetrack make for good side-by-side -side racing but because of the design because of the of the transitions into and out of the corners a little bit of banking to catch these trucks and then it's long straightaways you get a lot of speed up you don't have to use a lot of brake but we'll see speeds upwards of 180 miles an hour on the straightaways here what about the length of this race I mean it's a little bit longer than normal truck races that we see it really is and that could create some extra pitch strategy because it's 225 miles our typical races are 200 miles so you have to run about 30 laps before you can get in your pit window to make this race on two more pit stops a lot of times the drivers they can run 10 or 15 laps and get in a pit window to make it on two pit stops this time they're gonna have to go a little bit farther and they have a limit on tires. So how many, you know, should you put tires on at lap 30 or should you sit, wait it for the second pit stop? So it's going to be a little bit of strategy taking place here. Let's go track side as the invocation and anthem about to take place on pit road. We'll head down there now. And every race here at Kentucky Speedway, the members of the Kentucky National Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, let's pause for a moment of silence for NASCAR Crestman Truck Series official Dennis James, Dr. Bruce Kennedy, Mike Clem, and all the Sanford, Florida families affected by this week's tragedy.
Presenting today's invocation is Kentucky Speedway's track minister, John Roberts, and singing our national anthem. Most of you know him from a successful run on American Idol, and you just heard him on concert stage. Please welcome Taylor Hicks. May we bow and pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to take a moment to thank you for the blessings of life. We praise you for being the creator and the sustainer of life. We thank you for allowing us to be here this evening to enjoy this sport and enjoy this facility. Father, we pray for our troops as they protect our freedom. Father, we just pray for the, all the people involved this evening. We pray for the teams, the drivers, the fire and safety team, the NASCAR officials, and pray for your safety upon them. Father, we pray these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Oh, say can you see So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed. still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the signal from our TV anchor speed channels. The Apache helicopter fly over from the Kentucky National Guard. We're under the lights from the Kentucky Speedway. We come back. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed is presented by Ford F-Series. Built for bold moves, built for tough. Brought to you in part by the official tools of NASCAR, Craftsman, and by Fastenal. We get it right. Shadows are getting longer as we're closing in on the start of this race. It's the 13th race of the season for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. A beautiful day here in Sparta, Kentucky. 84 degrees, partly cloudy, just a slight breeze at 11 miles per hour. The fourth point standings through 12 of our 25 races. Mike Skinner has been dominant this season. Hasn't finished out of the top 10 yet. Hornaday, 103 points behind him. Krista mentioned it earlier about the dominance of former champions here in the top 10. Ted Musgrave, Jack Sprague, Travis Quaffle, Todd Bodine, Hornaday, and Skinner all in the top 10 looking for another championship. Take a look at our track description for this mile and a half super speedway. As you can see, it's a mile and a half in length. The corners are 14 degrees. They reach speed somewhere between 100 and 180 and 185 on the straightaways and down only to about 160 in the center of the corner. We'll hardly use any break here at this racetrack, but again, a very raceable surface, two, three wide. The MSD ignition race analysis, we take a look at it. There's only 35 trucks that are going to be starting this one. Michael, we're going to make your microphone work at some point in time today, but you had mentioned a little bit about this racetrack as far as Kentucky. I mean, you're from Kentucky here. And these fans are crazy about this track. Listen to this cheer when they yell, gentlemen, start your engines here in a second. Let's go down to the command. And now the most famous words in racing. Welcome back. Ford Motor Company's Scott Campbell. 
Drivers, start your engines! What a heartfelt command there for the gentlemen to start their engines. All of the engines are fired up. They'll be rolling onto the racetrack, and we will see the green flag when we come back to Kentucky. This is Bill. He works for Ford, and he's wrecked more cars than Hollywood. You ought to see my insurance rates. I'll take care of the jokes, Bill. Well, did the Ford F-150 get a five-star crash rating? Yep, five stars for both driver and front passenger. What about the other guys? Uh, some of the others didn't do as well. Ooh. So I guess sometimes it's better to play it safe? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to Kentucky Speedway as the trucks are about to roll out onto the racetrack. We'll see the starting grid roll along the bottom of your screen. Again, the engines have been fired up. But a very great start for young Ryan Matthews as he claims his first pull in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series and another good qualifying effort for Bill Lester on the outside of row one. One one thousandth of a second slower than Ryan Matthews was Bill Lester. Very tight in the top four. We're going to take a closer look at a few different drivers in our speed spotlight. We'll begin with Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Rick. Let's talk about the number 40 truck. They've got a brand new sponsor this week with Westerman Companies. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Curtis Key, the owner of this team, announced that Chad Chapman would be the new driver. But guess what? Chad Chapman's over in Chicago driving the cup race. So Brandon Miller filled in for him today, practicing yesterday and qualifying. And they decided at the last minute to go ahead and let Brandon Miller have a shot at running this 40 truck today. It's his sixth start. His career best finish is eighth at Bakersfield. Adam? Speaking of career best, Ryan Matthews, our pole center tonight, coming off his career best finish of sixth two weeks ago at Memphis. And he's back in black. This team looking for a sponsor. So they went with black to make sure everyone knows they need sponsorship on this truck. And another thing they've reverted back to, Bill Davis's favorite number. Why does the truck owner like 22? Well, he won the Daytona 500 with that number. I guess that's a pretty good reason, Phil. Adam, let's keep that common theme of best career finishes. And Tim Sauter driving the Lester Builder Chevrolet had his best career finish last time out at Memphis. He finished 11th. He's had about a half a dozen push starts here. He will start that Lester Builder Chevrolet in the 26th position for green light racing. Michael? Phil, my guy's Brian Silas, and since you insist, he had his best career ARCA Super, Super Speedway finish last night right here. So um, it took a little bit of digging for me to come up with something to say that uh, career best, but I did it. Delightful young man. Talked to him before, the, before we came up to the booth. He's very, very focused on his racing. He's going to run the whole ARCA circuit this year, some truck races, preserve his rookie status, and hopefully run all of the truck races next year. Quit laughing at me, Rick. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we signed we sign the spotlight on a few different drivers. We'll keep track of them throughout the broadcast. We're going to ride along with a few different drivers. And one of those being the number 18 fast and all dodge of rookie. Well, not, maybe not rookie, but Ken Schrader who has the rookie stripe on the back of his truck because he's never raced a truck here in Kentucky before. We're also going to ride along with our winner from last year. Ron Hornaday he won that race last year in Kevin Harvick Chevrolet. He will start in the 21st position. Filthy, your buddy Typo Dyn is uh, driving the number 30 Toyota. He's starting in 19th spot. Don't worry about where he's starting. You know where he's going. He's going to the front. He'll have to get by Rick Crawford. He's going to carry one of our cameras tonight. He starts in the 16th position. That camera helping us out through Harley Davidson. We're also going to ride along in the Aaron's Dream Machine with Josh Wise. Josh had a good run going last night in the Arca Remax Series race. Cut a tire down, made contact with a wall, running well and up in the top ten. Going to run a few Arca races, a few truck races. A lot of talent with that guy. I love that cat. Plus, he's a good kid. This is another kid that you'd like to see have success. Travis Boppel, he won the last time we were out on a bit of a roll with this truck. The points, is, the points are tightening up at the top, Bill. We could see that get even tighter after tonight. Well, before the green flag flies, let's head back down to Pitt Road and Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Rick. Let's talk about our thoughts before green. My thoughts are you're right. This is a great racetrack, and it's real wide, and it's fun to race on. But the Pitt Road wall, not so fun. Check this out. Most pit walls are about 24 inches, and you can throw your foot up there and jump on pretty easy. But this one, way up in the air, 30 inches tall. And how about this? Only four and a half inches wide. Really tough for the guys to get their footing here and to have plenty of place to stand. And imagine holding a tire up there, got your helmet on, you got your 
gun in your hand ready to go to work, and that's all that's supporting you. This pit wall could be a big factor tonight. It's tough on these guys. Adam? Ray, prior to last year here at Kentucky in six races, no one had ever come from deeper than seventh in the field to go to victory lane, but it all changed last season. That's when Ron Hornaday started 22nd and drove all the way to the front to pick up the victory. Well, tonight he starts 21st. I asked him in the garage area, how did you come from 22nd to win a year ago? He said, I had a great truck and I drove to the front. He should be confident about doing it again tonight. The reason why, this is the same machine he led 98 laps with and went to victory lane with at Charlotte a couple of months months ago guys thank you guys we appreciate that very much again heavy hearts today as this will be the first race since 2003 that Dennis James will not give the field the green flag he was up there on the flag stand in that first race that speed covered when they came three wide across the start finish line he's thrown the checkered flag for many a win here in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series but Last Wednesday, the 57-year-old Dennis James lost his life. And so heavy hearts for all of the officials. You see the sticker on the flag stand. DJ, everyone, not only the officials, but all the fans and all of us at speed are going to miss Dennis James. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family as they are grieving at this time. And along uh, with that, Bruce Kennedy and uh, Michael Clem down in Florida and all the families that were affected by that tragedy that took place last week in Sanford. Uh, our hearts and prayers go out to all those folks and along with uh, Dennis James. Time goes on, but uh, they will not be forgotten. Another tough week for NASCAR, but the best way to kind of get back going is to get back into racing. And we're about to do that. The pace truck is pulled off and it is all in the hands now of Ryan Matthews. He will bring the field to the green flag for the first time in his career. Bill Lester on the outside. This time it is Mark Angelini giving the green flag and the play in Kentucky. Well, it didn't take us long to get this thing three and maybe, maybe four wide. Brendan Gaughan got a great start, Phil. He jumped down to the inside, but then on the outside, Lester was able to dive down and take the lead. Well, what about the start Ryan Matthews got? I'm not even sure where he's running right now. He's back probably around 10th or 11th, something like that. What a horrible start for Ryan Matthews. They are jockeying for position as they come out of turn number four. Michael, you mentioned it earlier. Everybody is struggling trying to get positions early on when the tires still have grip. Todd Bodine struggling the most right now as he's backing up through the field. It looked like something happened to that truck. It looks like he's back up to speed now, Michael. It looked like maybe an ignition problem or something like that, but we can see him. He's, he's just about two trucks from the very back of the pack. He looks like he's got his hands full right now. See if we can tell if anybody bumps and maybe he loses some grip, Phil. And oh, he got sideways. loose right there. Yeah. Got loose, had to chase the truck up the hill. That well, killed all his momentum. He's he's still now he's quitting back there. Yeah, I think he must have a flat tire. He probably he is coming coming onto pit road. While he comes onto pit road, Bill right rear tire, right rear tire is flat on that truck. Wow, he didn't enough. even make it a lap and had a flat tire. Go look at the battle for the lead, Phil. <laughs> Three of them battling for the top spot. It's Bill Lester just in front of Brendan Gaughan and Mike Skinner. Look, Look at Brendan Gaughan on the outside. You know what Brendan Gaughan likes to do? He likes to run the high side. Gaughan coming on the high side. Skinner on the low side. Three wide as they go across the start finish line. Skinner now leads this race. And that will be the 13th consecutive race that he's won, uh, that he's led this year on the all-time record. But here comes Brendan yeah, on the outside. Saying. He's not going to lead another lap, I don't believe. I believe Brendan's going to lead the next lap. Ray, what's going on with the 30? He had a flat right rear. Yeah, it was totally shredded, Michael. And Todd said he could feel it right as the green flag came. They feel like maybe they ran over something. We'll get you a shot at this thing. But I'm telling you, the outer part of the tire was completely away from the inner liner. Tough break for Todd, but he gets back to the racetrack in a hurry. Side by side again as they cross the start finish line. This time Skinner just a nose in front of Brendan Gaughan. Gaughan staying on the high side and he will go right by Skinner as they go down the back stretch. Bren Brendan's got one and two figured out and Mike's got three and four. But the, the start finish line's over here so you'd rather have this end figured out. Now they start to stack up behind the two that are battling for the top spot. Brendan stayed down a little bit lower that time. Actually made a little better corner than he had been. Mike Skinner was not able to pull up beside him. 
So Brendan Gaughan will lead this race. Brendan was able to pass on the high side in one and two, so then he just figured maybe I'd run high in three and four. And here comes Skinner right back on him. That time, he held it down to the bottom. This is 25th and 26th. We talked earlier about Jack Spring having to go to the back because of a, a qualifying incident where he got into the wall after his first attempt. He was actually qualified to run or to start this race in the third position, but had to go all the way back because they brought a, a backup out. Yeah, remember, that truck has not run one lap until the green flag right here, so... He told us early on in the pre-race show that he may have to adjust on this truck if it's not exactly right, and I don't think it's to his liking right now. But you also, you, you know you've got a great race team, so he's fairly confident he can get that thing to the first caution, get some work done to it. Here's a pass for the lead, this time off to Skinner with the hand. Skinner having a little better handling through one and two this time, and he takes the point. Adam? And prior to the race, Mike Skinner starting fourth. Got a reminder from Jeff Hensley, his crew chief, about some of the inexperience of the guys in front of him as far as starting position goes. He said, we're not sure what's going to happen there. Be patient. Take your time. Skinner did that, laid in the weeds, and he crosses the start-finish line as the leader. That's a new NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series record, the 13th consecutive race that Skinner has been on the point. Amazing season for Mike Skinner. He's finished in the top 10 every race so far. So look, at, look at Eric Arnell going for the second position. And remember, Eric Arnell was so dominant at Kansas Speedway, race, a racetrack somewhat similar to this racetrack, won by like 10 or 11 seconds, the third largest margin of victory that we've ever had. This, uh, the, the garage area was buzzing about the nine. They said he's going to be good. They said the 23 is going to be good. I said, they're always good. Tell me somebody that we don't expect to run up front that's going to do that. They said, look for Eric Darnell, not only to run up front, but to maybe dominate this race as time goes forward. Right now, he's relinquished the spot back to Brendan Gaughan. Brendan Gaughan with a strong run right now at Kentucky. But it's Mike Skinner who's been able to grab the point once again. Four lead changes already in this race. Mike Skinner has led the most laps as he continues out front at Kentucky Speedway. We'll be back with more right here on Speed. Bad luck continuing for the number 14 team. Rick Crawford getting into the wall and a lot of damage to the outside of that truck. Let's take a look. He's Bill, going this is turn number three, Michael, and the classic. We've seen it so many times. Rick was on the inside of Ryan Matthews, lost some downforce, some air off the rear spoiler, lost the back end. And, and here at Kentucky, there aren't really high enough backs, banks to stop you from going up into the outside wall. And, and you know how helpless this feeling is. Before you know it, all of a sudden, you've got that arrow loose. You take it takes the air off, and you're going, man, it, it, everything felt perfect. Everything was going well. And then the thing just gets away from you at the last second, and that truck's damaged bad. They took it behind the wall, and so into the garage it goes. Crawford trying to battle for a championship, currently fifth in the points in front of him. The three of Todd Bodine, and the 30 of Todd Bodine, he actually gets the Aaron's lucky dog. So Todd Bodine back on the lead lap. unique star motorcycles there's no limit to how far you can tomorrow nascar race day whips the windy city into a fan frenzy with the only live pre-race show that can withstand the speed of chicago land nascar race day built by the home depot starts tomorrow 1 p.m eastern 10 a.m pacific live and only on speed sun setting here on the kentucky speedway and let's go down to the garage area where i'm sure rick crawford not too happy I bet he's not happy. That thing got away from him, got up in the wall. High expectations for this race. Rick finished second last year in this race here at the Kentucky Speedway. Considerable damage to the right side of that uh, circle bar forward. And, you know, Rick's a great racer. He, he knows how to race these trucks, and that just tells you, Phil. I, I like for people to realize that's how hard this job is. We were up at Chicago practicing this morning. Mark Martin spun out. People are going, well, how do you do that? Right. Well, you ought to try to do this once, and you'd see. I, I get spoiled by watching on TV because I'm, I'm going, why don't you just go a little faster? <laughs> but they're going as fast as they can. Go in a corner a little harder. <laughs> yeah. Again, this is how all that damage took place. This was coming into turn number three. He's just on the inside of that other truck, the 22 of Ryan Matthews, and when you have a truck on the inside, of another truck it just loses some of the air off that rear spoiler and they rely on every single pound of downforce on the rear of that truck and when he lost some of it around it went 
Now Adams with Rick Crawford. Rick, you experienced it on the racetrack. You just saw the replay. What happened? Uh, that's true. A meaning of built Ford Tough, I guess. Uh, uh, here we are to built Ford Tough 225 and the Ford Power Stroke Diesel by International. Uh, you know, I should have known that uh, the inside of turn three down there was a lot slicker than it was, and uh, I just put it under there to to get past the 22 truck and advanced position there and lost it. Glad you're okay. Tough break for Rick Crawford out of the race early at Kentucky. And that team's going to go to work on it because, I, like I said earlier, he's fifth in the points right now. He wants to get back out there and try to stay in the top five in the points if he can. We're back to green. See Ted Musgrave jump to the inside as well as Johnny Benson. Johnny Benson jumps by the 09 of Joey Clanton. That's what we talked about in the pre-race show, Phil. You've got to make time when they throw the green flag. That's your best chance to get around some trucks and gain that all-important driving position. When, and I know you're, I mean, obviously, when they throw the green flag, you want to gain position. I mean, right when they throw it. That's why they go down into the first turn three wide. Well, we talk about cycling of the tires. I mean, the, the cycles that they go through, they're coolest at that point. And so most grip, is that what we're expecting out of them? But you got, you got a little more grip, and you're also not up to full speed when you go through the corner. If you can get by somebody and you get on the inside of them, then you're not going to have to rely on a downforce that we saw Rick Crawford lose getting in turn three. And plus, it's a, ooh, Johnny Benson slips off turn two over there in a real fast truck. Slides back a few spots, and again, checking out on this field, Mike Skinner. What a dominant performance he's already starting here at Kentucky. But watch that nine truck right there of Ted Musgrave. He just got by the 99 of Eric Donnell to take over the fourth position. Ted's marching his way towards the front. Ted's probably got a little bit he wants to prove, wouldn't you say, Phil? I would say so. He had a he had a an un, uh, unscheduled week off a couple weeks ago. And, and then as uh, the guy that drives his truck, Brad Keselowski, sets on the pole, looks like might win the race. And I know Ted was sitting at home. You wait till I get back in that thing. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm gonna chew the steering wheel off that thing when I get there. Well, and in the second practice, our final practice for the truck series, he was fastest, and so it really showed that he has a very good truck tonight. Another couple trucks that were running very well in practice. Brendan gone and Travis Quapple, two trucks running nose to tail right now, running second and third. Yeah, I think, didn't you talk about how that six truck is on the roll? Michael, oh, Travis Quapple, he looks good again here. He's going to work his way to the inside, possibly, of the 77 South Point Chevrolet, Brendan gone. But, but, you know, they really started out great at Daytona. They were within 100 feet of winning that race, ended up finishing third, and then it went south. And they didn't seem like they could, they could hit their back with either hand. And then all of a sudden, they went back to work as you see Travis drive to the inside of the 77 and now they're good each and every week and you see I think that has a whole lot to do with Eric Darnell running well those two teams started working together understanding what it took to be fast and now they're both fast there's three trucks battling for the second position the guy who started up front Ryan Matthews has dropped all the way back into the 11th position right what's going on with well his truck is very very loose right now in the race but Ryan Matthews came on the radio and apologized to his race team. He said, guys, I did not get a very good start there at the front of the race. He said, I'm sorry, but he said, guess what? I've never done this before. So a little bit of nerves maybe for this young driver who's shown a lot of promise, but right now his race truck is just way too loose. Adam? And if he wants someone to get advice from, he can go to his teammate who leads the series points. That's Mike Skinner. And leading tonight's race under caution, crew chief Jeff Hensley said, what do you think about your truck? He said, I'm not going to talk bad about it, but it's getting better every lap. How comfortable do you feel when you say it's getting better every lap and you're leading the field right now by over two seconds? Well, and plus he's, I've never seen anyone, he's a half a second faster than anybody on the whole screen. That dude is on a roll. You know, I talked to Jeff Hensley at the hotel this morning before we came out to the racetrack. He said, you know, last year we did not run well. So we really went to Iowa last week and did a lot of testing. You wouldn't think that possibly you could test at Iowa for Kentucky Speedway. It's a seven-eighths of a mile short track. But he said we learned a lot of things with our spring setup, and we tried something a lot different than we have in the past, and we really liked it. Well, and, and this is as fast as that truck's ever. I mean, we've seen him haul the mail before, but wow, he is driving away from these guys. Well, you're talking about a fast Toyota up front. Ted Musgrave just took second away from Brendan Gaughan, and now he'll set his sights on Mike Skinner. We talked about Ted Musgrave trying to maybe prove something tonight. He looks as though he's on a rail right now in that truck. Well, and just a footnote on Ryan Matthews, he went from first to 13th on the first lap, and he's gotten from 13th up to 11th since then, so that truck's getting better as well. He's filling it up under him a little bit more, probably shook the nerves off. Look for him to rebound up through the top 10. And being a little loose right now may not be a bad thing later on when the track cools off for him and we get towards darkness. 
this track will change quite a bit between now and say halfway. That's when the biggest change will happen in the racetrack and these guys will have to be ready to adjust for it. You don't get many snaps at it, Phil. You only come to pit road a couple times and you better make sure you make the right adjustments when you get there. Again, at the start of this race, it was 84 degrees. The sun was still predominantly on three-fourths of the racetrack now. The shadows are long, very little sunlight shining on the racetrack now as the lights become a little more prominent here at Kentucky Speedway. Under the lights once again for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. We're closing in on the halfway point of the 2007 season. Mike Skinner out in front. That is a broken record that we continue to talk about. Here's a side-by-side -side battle for third. It seems like Travis Quapo and Brendan Gaughan have been battling since we went back after that restart. Check out these trucks, man. They bounce around, don't they, Phil? They really do. And, you know, this racetrack has some character. This is not an ultra-smooth, perfect surface. It's got some bumps. It's got a little character. As you see Brendan look, get a little bit wide here, that's going to allow the six of Travis Quapple to get underneath him and race him down the front straightaway. Watch these trucks bounce down the front straightaway. And NASCAR race vehicles, they like bumpy tracks. They make the arrow, they, they, they take some of the arrow out of play. They make you have mechanical grip. That's a good thing for what we do. Travis Quapple takes third away from Brendan Gaughan. Ted Musgrave in second. They're all chasing that man right there. Mike Skinner out in front of the field. His team looks comfortable now. But again, they've got to make one stop, maybe two, for the end of this race. FoxSports.com and SpeedTV.com form the most powerful online team in NASCAR. For breaking news, in-depth analysis, detailed driver stats, and more, log on to SpeedTV.com now. Riding along with, it looks like a very bumpy ride there for Ron Hornaday. I'm telling you, you, you call by on these trucks down this front straightaway especially. The corners are pretty smooth here, but this front straightaway, it'll shake you a little bit going down through there. Yeah, probably the front straightaway is the bumpiest part of this racetrack. And with the, with the very, very soft springs that these trucks run now, maybe about 400 pounds per inch of, of compression, it's really, really bumpy because when, they, when the spring coils get together, that makes them infinite, and that makes them a lot stiffer. We look at Mike Skinner out here. He is now out in front of the field by four seconds. You had mentioned earlier about Eric Darnell and how dominant of a performance he had when he won earlier this year. Could Mike Skinner just run away with this one? Well, we hope not. <laughs> we definitely I hope I, not. I think it's too early. Like we said, around halfway, this track's going to change somewhat. And then after that, well, I mean, before that, we're probably going to have pit stops. And then also, you have to plan on how you adjust your truck. I don't think they've seen the last of guys like David Green driving that one truck. You know, is David Green, can we think that the COT practicing and the testing that he's done for Hendrick, does that help him in the trucks? He's just a good race car driver. He's a former Bush champion. He's won a lot of Bush races. Did a great job with Hendrick in that COT, but I think every lap that you run on a racetrack helps, especially the good testing that he's doing with Hendrick Motorsports. But he's a good race car driver. He's run well here in Bush cars and everywhere he goes. He's a great qualifier and he's just a good race car driver. That's why he's going to run well here in that truck. And you can look right behind him there in the 22 truck. Ryan Matthews continues to step up toward the front. He's into the 10th spot now, going around the outside of Bill Lester. David Green laid right up there ahead of him. Ryan's driven away from Johnny Benson. So, you know, the, the pole wasn't a fluke. We've seen him be very competitive. He did get a terrible start, but now he's rebounding. Ray Dunlap, what's going on with that 23 truck? Well, Johnny Benson not happy at all with his Toyota. Very, very loose in and through the center. So they're going to go down on the track bar, and they're going to pull a rubber out of the right rear and maybe even a wedge adjustment. Johnny said the truck is a little better when he gets right up on somebody's bumper, but so far he has not been able to move forward because he's way, way loose. Adam? And we should document the progress being made by Jack Sprague currently riding in the 20th position but that only because he had to start at the rear of the field in a backup truck, getting some company to the outside of Blake Yorkland. That could be because his truck tight in the center and off. Well, side-by-side -side action there is we see Sprague looking to the inside of Blake Yorkland in that number eight. I'm guessing a lot of these drivers, as Rick Crawford mentioned earlier, a little timid to get on the inside of other trucks because of that problem with the air coming off of the spoiler on the back. Yeah, and especially getting turn number three because the transition from straightaway to turn really comes in late. There's Ty Bodine right there. We saw the problems he had with his flat tire. He got the lucky dog, got back on the lead lap. Now he's being shown in the 19th position. That's John Wood, the 21 right in front of him. John had a poor qualifying effort for the same reason that we saw what happened to Jack Sprague. 
John got real loose getting in the corner and really affected both laps. Got a good battle for fourth. There's Mike Bliss right there. What a good run he's having in one of Bobby Hamilton's trucks. Well, I just want everyone to know Mike Bliss is a great race car driver. You put him in anything and he's going to go. He's driven the heck out of that Bush car this year, made races in Cup, and now he's giving this four truck the best run we've seen for Bobby Hamilton racing in a while. Yeah, Mike finished in the top five at Dover in this, in this truck, so uh, he has had some good runs for Bobby Hamilton racing in this four truck. He's racing for the third spot now. I mean, well, for the fourth spot, he's up on Brendan Gone, trying to get that spot away and running fast lap times. And Mike's a former winner here, so he knows how to get around this place. Plus, he can dance. That man can <laughs> dance. That, the jury's still out. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's an opinion call on that one. Mike, uh, Mike used to have the famed dance on the tailgate as he would do that once he made it into victory lane. And now he dances right by that 77 of Brendan Gaunt and takes over the fourth position from Gaunt. Gaunt will drop back into fifth. Brendan Gaunt, one of the three drivers that has led this race. Bill Lester, Brendan Gaunt, and Mike Skinner continuing out front. His lead now only three seconds over Ted Musgrave. Can Musgrave catch him? We're going to find out when we come back with more here on Speed. This Thursday, Speed presents Fine Tune from 0 to 360 in eight days. Watch as actor, model, and car enthusiast Tyson Beckford and award winning import car designer Lucky J fine tune a car from bumper to bumper in only eight days. Fine Tune premiere. Is that, is that girl Tyson Beckford? I don't think so. No, I, I'm pretty sure Tyson Beckford is a gentleman. Uh, I think we call her promo girl. And out in front of this field, Mike Skinner continuing to dominate. 3.8 seconds, actually 4.1 seconds now as he crosses the start-finish line in front of Ted Musgrave. Musgrave still holding on to second with a pretty good gap between he and Travis Quapple. Then it's Mike Bliss, Brendan Gaughan rounding out our top five. It's a good battle for the sixth spot right there. Ryan Matthews has made his way up to seventh. He's trying to get the sixth spot from the 99 of Eric Darnell. He's just marching. And we talked about being so loose at the beginning of the race may not necessarily be a bad thing, and it looks like it's working for him now. Mike Skinner is definitely testing the toughness of these Goodyear tires because he is still running laps half second faster than second place at times. Traffic has a whole lot to do with the here and there, uh, Rick, but when he gets free, he can run a 3160 still. Some of the other guys, the best you see from him is 32 flat. Is it too hard? I mean, this late in the run, wearing into these tires, is he running too hard or can you run too hard? All the crew chiefs told me that these tires are very, very tough. This is a little bit harder tire, a little bit harder left side tire than these trucks had here last year. And again, they felt like they put 60 laps on these tires in practice, and they felt like they could go another 60. They felt like they could put at least 100 laps on these tires. But hey, we're not too far away from pit stops. You, you tell, uh, you tell Mike Skinner the tires are plenty tough. He's going to drive the heck out of that. <laughs> As we see right now, the 09 of Joey Clanton having a great run so far in the Zaxby's board. There's Johnny Benson. He's running 10th right now. But I'll tell you, how smart has Mike Skinner driven this year, Michael? It's been a different Mike Skinner for sure. We saw him last year make some mistakes that cost him a chance to be in the position he is now. The thing that I think is crazy, though, Phil, even though Mike's been so smart and done such a nice job every race this year, he's watched that point lead just simply slip away. He's got some company now in Ron Hornaday, and he's got some company with Travis Quapple. These guys can make a run on him. Now, now he is he does have a good lead, but he, these guys he knows are coming. Yeah, and they're going to make adjustments, too, on the pit stop. So, you know, they're not, their trucks are going to get better as this night wears on, and they adjust on them. But what a side battle here. Side here. Wow, for the sixth position, Eric Darnell and Ryan Matthews continuing the battle here. They can't work it out, can they, Phil? No, <laughs> no. You see Ryan Matthews giving Eric Darnell plenty of room, or vice versa. Eric Darnell is not really hugging down to the 22 because he does not want to see that 22 get loose on the bottom of the racetrack and possibly spin and take them both out. And, you know, at this point in time, it might be wise for Darnell to let Matthews go. He caught him from a ways back. We know that truck's fast. The 99 could save them both a great deal of time, Adam, if he would just sort of fall back behind. 22, but he ain't doing it yet. Well, he's competitive on the racetrack, and perhaps the reason, this is the same truck that he won with at Kansas, Michael, so Eric knows it's a good machine. Word on the radio for Eric Darnell, starting to get free as we have caution on the racetrack. Sure enough, accident happening, coming out of turn number two, and that is the 50, Pete Shepard. Yeah, the 59 of Terry Cook was also involved in the Harris Trucking Toyota, but there's Terry right there. 
Pete Shepard's had a rough couple of days. Yeah, he really has. He was the fastest car in ARCA practice yesterday and then hit the wall hard coming off turn number two. He Actually broke, broke the he wall. He broke it. You don't want to have that on your resume. No. That was in qualifying. Yep, and there, uh, there's Terry climbing out of his truck. That's a good sign right there. A lot of damage to that Harris truck in Toyota. Now Schrader is in a position to receive the Aaron's Lucky Dog. Just going to lap down. He will get the free pass courtesy of Aaron's. And he will be very, very appreciative of that. He already is appreciative of Aaron's. We make commercials for them every now and then. Yeah, well, there you go. There you go. Look he at knows. the damage to that 50 of Pete Shepard. That's hard to figure how that happened, Phil. Yeah, let's see if we can take a look back and maybe he why this got happened. That's that. a little bit late there. They may have got together. They're coming off turn number two. And that that 59 trucks wiped out on yeah, that left. It right almost front. looks like he may have been pinched. Let's see if we can take another look at it right there. Oh, they got together. They made contact in the side wow. of the corner, and then both of them just took off towards the outside wall. Like they got very hooked hard together hit by Terry Cook too, as far as he he got directed right at that corner. Yeah, thank thank goodness for the safer barriers. Oh, you have to know how important that is. And look at Josh Wise watching all this. Staying calm, that's yeah. cool. You he's know, got, you he's see got a good it. spotter up top, buddy. Red Dog Barnes up top there, keeping him uh, keeping him abreast of what was going on. And that's the most important thing when you see a crash. You just got to remain calm and figure out how to pick your way through it. And that's what Josh yeah, don't, did. Don't slam on the brakes. Don't slam on the brakes and maybe cause your own problem. But there's our Aaron's lucky dog right there. That that's a happy it. man. You called it the Aaron's lucky dog going to Ken Schrader. He'll get his lap back. He's currently scored in the 21st position, Adam Alexander. Skinner on pit road, free in, tight on the gas. Four tires, fuel slide, air pressure adjustment. Meanwhile, Travis Quapple comes on to pit road as well. He's complained his Ford F-150 tight in the early going. Wedge and air pressure for Quapple, the Ray Dunlap. Mike Bliss real happy with his open joist dodge. He is going to put air pressure in to the right front. And you see Ted Musgrave also coming down pit road. We see in the center of the screen, you've got the number six at the bottom. Bliss having just a little bit of a hold up on that number four. The six is away. We'll watch the race off of pit road. There's Mike Skinner right there coming down towards us. He is going to win that battle off pit road. Mike Skinner does it. How about David Green? David, David Green, Green coming, coming out second. Coming out second, then Travis Quapple, Ryan Matthews, Joey Clinton, Ted Musgrave, and Eric Darnell. Ryan Matthews fell from first to 13th on the first lap, and he's all the way back up to fourth. A seesaw battle for Ryan Matthews early on in this race. He started on the pole, went back to 13th, now back in the top five. Breaking your birthday like in August and September, too, or what? Well, we're going to talk about birthdays a little bit later, but the sun's setting here on the Kentucky Speedway in Sparta, Kentucky, for the Bill Ford Tough 225. Again, the second caution has come out here. We're still under that caution right now, Phil. Yeah, let's uh, let's see if we can uh, talk to our dominant driver so far. Hey, Mike Skinner, Phil Parsons up in the booth there. You got a copy? How you doing? Good, man. Uh, that truck uh, looks pretty good. Jeff Hensley told me this morning that he didn't think you guys were very good last year but you really learned some stuff at Iowa and it really seems to be put into play here and you guys are awfully dominant. Can you believe we're coil binding? I hate the I can't even spell it. Yeah this is the first time for you guys to be coil bind right? Yeah 10 four. Uh, we don't know how to adjust it. We don't know how to work on it but uh, that's what's in here right now. It, it might come back and haunt us at the end of the race but uh, we thought we'd rather try something new here in the middle of the year in case it bites us. You know, we got time to get caught back up. Hey, uh, well, Phil, well, it looks like that, uh, you know, what you, you don't need to adjust on it much the way the thing's been running so far. Yeah, it's a little loose in, a little bit tight off, tight in the center. But, uh, you know, clean air is a wonderful thing. You know that. And these guys uh, got us a good pit stop there. We've got track position. You know, if I was back in the pack, it probably wouldn't be near as good. But, uh, Clean air is a wonderful thing. Hey, Mikey wants to talk to you. Happy birthday. Didn't you call me an old fart or something? Probably, but um, I just want to tell you that it's amazing the way you wheel that truck. Uh, don't adjust it like Phil said. Uh, you worried about the tires at all? I hear from the pit, down in the pits that those things are tough as nails. Those Goodyears will take whatever you can give them. Yeah, Jeff said they look like they'd go another 60 laps, the ones that just come off, so I'm pretty excited about that. We took it awful easy on them right there. Uh, just tried to run the pace that the truck behind us was running, and uh, like I said, I don't know where we're going to go from here, but 
you know, several times we come down pit road and put a set of tires on, then we go all to pieces. But uh, hopefully tonight we can keep up here. All right, Mike, we're going to let you go, but uh, we're going to go down to Ray with a report from the pit. You want to throw it down there? 10-4, guys. Have a good one. Well, I'll just pick it up for you, Phil, because we want to show you the tires that just came off of Ted Musgrave's truck. Everything looking good on a couple of tires, but a big old chunk out of the right front. And this is on the inside of the tire. Now, the guys are getting ready to look at the wear. Wear looks really good here, no problems. But check this out. Seeing a little bit of the cording here and a big chunk out of the inside of the right front. Rick Gay said he saw this a couple of years ago here with Terry Cook. So hopefully we won't have any big problems with that, but a good timely pit stop for him to get in here and get new tires on that number nine. Adam? Tough weekend on the racetrack for Peter Shepard. The youngster hit the wall yesterday in the ARCA car. Tough break here tonight. What was the problem? Oh, you know, just uh, hate it for everybody involved with Northern Tool and Equipment. Just uh, can't thank him enough for coming on board. We couldn't give him a good run tonight. And, you know, I thought we thought we had a real good truck, uh, you know, coming for, coming in for, uh, for the race. But, uh, you know, we just couldn't get the handle on it. A little free in, a little tight off. And that deal over there, that was just uh, the, the 59 was lapping, uh, lapping the 91. And the 91 kind of closed down. It wasn't really his fault. You know, just uh, not a lot of racing room there. And, and that 59 started to wiggle a little bit. And uh, when he wiggled, he had to check up, understandably. And we got in the back of him. And, just hate it for everybody involved. You know, this Ford F-150 was, was really solid. We thought we were going to be able to adjust on it and make it fast. And like I said, I hate it for everybody. But uh, hopefully we'll be back next time and uh, be a lot faster and get a better run for everybody. Peter Shepard scheduled to make his third consecutive start in the Truck Series at O'Reilly Raceway Park in the 50 truck. Truck Series, a place for people to have opportunities presented to them. Fastenal Dodge, a part of one of those opportunities. Fastenal and Bobby Hamilton Racing have teamed up for a very special internship program. Two recipient college graduates, Jason Del Pierre and Kyle Paulson, have spent a week with the team working hand in hand with the team's mechanics and will be a part of BHR's pit crew tonight. The two were selected based on their academic records as part of a nationwide selection process that targeted students in technical programs. So congratulations to those two young gentlemen. You see that all the time in the truck series, Phil, and I love that. You got guys coming from, from uh, different cultures, the diversity program that allows people to come in and work with the teams and learn what's about. This deal with Fasten and Bobby Hamilton Racing, those guys getting to understand what, it's, what it means to actually get in the trenches and work with the guys on these, uh, not only in the garage, but right. on a pit stop, how intense that is. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure on a couple kids getting to be a part of that as well. So hands-on learning there Phil you see this guy right here that's Jeff White the guy in the center there he's the crew chief one of the brightest guys in the garage area there he is, he is Ken Schrader's crew chief longtime employee of BHR and, and one of the best guys in the garage area and really one of the sharpest minds you got these these uh, interns helping Bobby Hamilton's team in the pit I talked to Josh Weiss right before the race started with his Aaron's dream machine lucky dog truck his dad's catching tires for him. His dad came up to me and he said, is there anything I need to know about? What should I be worried about catching tires? I said, well, as long as, you, as long as you can catch them, you'll be fine. Ray Dunlap. Hey, how about a run for David Green tonight here in the home state of Kentucky? Really good race truck under him there at the Red Horse Racing Group. They uh, put four tires on him. Fuel made an air pressure adjustment in the right front. But how about this, guys? He came in running eighth and went out third. So a great pit stop for that crew, giving David Green good track position. He'll restart second right behind Skinner. I think they've got a good truck, and I'll tell you what, if there's any place David Green would love to win, it's right here. Oh, yeah. As Ray mentioned, he came out in third because the 08 of Chad McCombie stayed on the racetrack. He actually was the second truck off pit road. Chad McCombie has since come down pit road, and uh, now that will allow David Green to restart this race right behind our leader, Mike Skinner. There's a bunch of Kentucky connections out there on that racetrack that would love to get a, a victory here in their home state. But Mike Skinner is going to bring them to the green, and he looks invincible green, so green, far. Green. I thought you were talking about Peter Shepard. The Canucks. <laughs> green flag flies. It's Mike Skinner out in front of David Green. Let's see if David Green's got anything for Mike Skinner. He looks to the inside and darts out to the outside. Skinner says, I'm going to take that spot down on the bottom of the racetrack. And look at Travis Quapple on the outside of the racetrack. He used momentum. David had to lose his momentum when he dove down low. The other truck took advantage of that. Quapple took advantage over on the outside. Now he's going to go after Skinner. Quapple back out in the second position. Oh, Skinner Skinner's running a little bit high there as he goes through three and four. There's a spinoff for problems. It looks as though the 75 of Dennis Setzer gets sideways coming out of turn number four. He's in the grass. The 13 of Willie Allen has also spun. He is on the apron over in turn number four. That was Dennis Setzer gets his truck 
right it and back towards the racetrack. Willie Allen's was a whole separate deal. It didn't have anything to do with the first crash. Those guys just all squeezed together trying to use the same road there off, off four, Phil. You can see them get three wide. Remember, all these trucks came down pit road. The air pressures are really low here, so these trucks don't exactly handle the best right after a pit stop. And unfortunately, we lost two uh, two trucks right here with Dennis Setzer spinning and the 13 of Willie Allen. But they'll get some fresh tires back on those trucks. Didn't hit anything. Let's look at the replay. You can see these three trucks just all come together right there exiting turn four. Yeah, it looked like the 75 of Dennis Setzer was right against the 09 of Joey Clanton, and then Ted Musgrave drove up right up behind him. I'm not sure he made any contact, but it was enough to just to take the air off the rear spoiler and around he went. And did you see what Setzer did? He had that thing matted. Tire spinning, you think, he's wrecking, hit the brakes. No, don't hit the brakes, let's stay in the gas this time. Great crowd on hand here at Kentucky. We'll be back with more. Welcome back to the Kentucky Speedway. Aaron's lucky dog going to Craig Kinzer in the number 47. He grabs a lap back and will be scored in the 22nd position. You know, that's a mile and a half of real estate <laughs> that they're, they're just giving away. It's just so valuable, and I think it's just amazing that Aaron's uh, came up with this idea. They called NASCAR up and said, we think we should give away some free laps, and we want to be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> They've done a nice job as we take a look out of the back of Ron Hornaday's on board. There's, and this, there's this, Toddley right there, it, Todd Bodine. The, the cat, the, the, the onion man, he hasn't had the fast truck we thought he would have. You know, he said he's starting in the back. But well, he we was, don't know because he's, he's running 12th right now. Remember, he had a flat tire, got a lap down, got the lucky dog, and he's back up to 12th. He may have a fast truck. Green flag about to come back out. We're about to restart here at Kentucky. The green flag flies. Mike Skinner still out in front. He's led 56 laps so far in this race. Travis Pommel's going to look to the outside. Travis is very, very good on the restarts. He was able to jump by the one of David Green on the last restart. Now he's hanging right with that five of Mike Skinner. Not only hanging with, gaining on. And we saw Skinner push. Ooh, look at this mess. Got a wad. There's Jack Sprague on the inside in the middle of your screen. Look at look at Todd looking at the inside of Hornaday. Not quite able to do it. He had to back off the throttle and look how much momentum he lost. Thing got sideways on him. He tried to stick it down in a hole that wasn't quite there. Jack Sprague took advantage of that, was able to get by Todd Bodine. Now Matt Crafton trying to get by Bodine as well on the outside. He was running very high through three and four. These turns are banked 14 degrees, and the eighth one's only banked about two, and it doesn't have quite as much grip down there. Well, and, and also upsets the truck tremendously if you ever hook down on it. A lot of times, if your truck's pushing a little bit, oh, we got to spin in turn three. Problems again John in turn Wood. number three, and oh, a very close call there as John Wood gets it righted. Didn't hit a thing, did a 360. Ryan Silas in that 71 was going into turn three and four when John got sideways and was able to avoid. We're 64 laps into this race. This race is 150 laps. If they pit now, that would not get them in a pit window there to make it. So I don't think anyone's going to pit at them. And the word on the 21, loose in. John came on the radio, said he can't believe how much he is loose on the racetrack going into the corner. So John Monson told him they're going to fix it up. He's going to come down pit road here after the spin on the racetrack, Ray. Adam, let me give you an update real quickly about the racetrack. Everybody on the radio is saying that turn three and four has some sort of a substance down there, maybe oil somewhere. They believe it may be left over from last night's ARCA Remax Series race. And we saw problems with a number of trucks in qualifying all down in three and four. So everybody on the radio is saying this caution period is going to continue to repeat itself and until they get the racetrack cleaned up in three and four. You know, there was something, we had an accident in the ARCA race last night and they put a lot of speedy drive and there was a lot of oil and debris over in turn number three. They came in, we, we were told, and walked washed the racetrack down with soap and water with fire trucks and all the drivers said they really had a hard time getting in turn three qualifying. We saw Jack Sprague obviously had you know, a lot of damage from hitting the wall. Ron Hornaday had a problem. John Wood had a problem qualifying. We just lost the truck getting in the corner. So that may be what we're fighting at him. And a very loose racetrack as you talked about, especially for John Wood. That's the reason he's fun. Going into turn three, no major problems though as far as the truck is concerned. They did make a chassis adjustment, four tires fueling the truck. A little bit of problem on the left rear, but no big deal here. They make the chassis adjustment. John Wood will pull away, and once again, he'll have to make his way back through the field. 
You know, we were talking about those trucks having some trouble qualifying. Let's take a look back at qualifying earlier this evening. We're going to watch some of the cars that had problems or some of the trucks that had problems in qualifying. There's Ron Horner. He watched. He gets down there and the fingers, he got loose and had to chase it all the way up the hill. He actually aborted this lap, stopped and went around. There's Brendan gone. He had a good truck. He had a good qualifying lap on lap one. Almost loses the truck right there on lap number two. Here's John Wood. Going to be a similar situation. You see him wiggle all in the same place on the racetrack. Matt Craft and another truck had a similar problem in the same part of the racetrack here. And oh. But worst of all, Michael, was Jack Sprague. When you're qualifying, Phil, you're on full tilt, and you drive down in that corner expecting that thing to stick. And what happens when it doesn't stick? We saw some of that, and this is what happens when it really doesn't stick. In the you same just, spot, turn you just, three. You trust that your truck's gonna stick. That's how hard you have to drive to be up front. There's another view of it right there. He just got down there. I talked to Jack right after the driver's meeting. He said, I really didn't expect it. It just all of a sudden just snapped on me. There's Tony Furr and Jack Sprague after the incident. Tony was very calm. We watched Tony during this whole situation there when Jack lost that truck, as you see them unloading the backup earlier this evening. And they've driven that backup truck from last all the way up into the top 15. Jack's currently riding 13. Yeah. Jack has a lot of confidence in Tony Furr and that entire Conway team. You can see the serial. He actually, you know, says he started third, but he really started at the very back of the pack. Officially, he started third, but he was at the very back when they when he started with this backup truck right here. We're getting ready to go back green. Well, that'd be a good thing. So far, as we have completed 66 laps of racing, four cautions have come out. Involved in them, the 14, the 50, the 59, the 75, and most recently, the 21. Ray Dunlap. Hey, let's talk about Ryan Matthews. He's back up to fourth, but he's having a lot of trouble on the restarts. And we saw his trouble on the initial start. He said what's happening is he's spinning the rear wheels. So they've decided to have him try to restart this time in third gear. He'll roll off fourth right here. Let's keep an eye on that 22 and see if this restarts any better than the last three. Pace truck. Randy Kaiser pulling that off on the pit road. Who got the lucky dog that time? Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller in the number 40. The green flag back in the air. Uh-oh. Brian Matthews is a good qualifying and a great racer. He just needs to learn how to start a little bit better. And yeah. I know that comes with time, Phil, and that's exactly what he needs. Yes, but he did does. not get off to a good start there. He's got got pressure from Musgrave from behind. Yeah, just as Ray was talking about, he did not get a good initial start nor the subsequent restarts. And there's Ted Musgrave. That hurt, uh, hurt his momentum, and now he's going to have to deal with Ted Musgrave on the inside of the racetrack. But he's got a lot of confidence in that truck. You could see the way he flew down into that third turn on the high side. Drove it in deeper than Musgrave, but Ted rallies back. Side by side. These two are battling for the fourth position. Look at all these trucks behind him. Three wide there. Dennis Setzer, the lap truck on the inside. There's Bliss in the four truck. Joey Clinton, the 09 right now, is running in the sixth spot. There's the Onion right there behind the 77 South Point Chevrolet. Brendan gone. Just, all these trucks right there in the top ten. These trucks are just needing that track position, Phil. So when they say go, if they can go three wide, they're going to take advantage of it. Just try to get around a truck so they can get a little bit, a uh, little bit of that track position that they all value so much. The 99 of Eric Anel got extremely wide coming off turn number four. Was able to hold a spot. Mike Bush was not able to do anything with that little bit of momentum he had going. Joey Clanton in that 09 running well. We see Ooh, Brendan Gaughan Gaughan get real, real really loose. loose in that 77. Got a spin off turn two. Todd Bodine in the 30 gets spun around and into the inside wall. Looks like he just barely kissed the inside wall with the left rear corner. Yeah, no damage to the front of that truck, so he should be okay. The caution flag is out. A he, fifth caution already at the Kentucky Speedway. I don't think there's any damage to that truck, Phil. Yeah, I'm not even sure he got into it with the uh, left rear corner. Maybe he, just touched it. I saw a spark, so he I got in. Too, yeah. He got into something, but it doesn't. You don't see where it, how it happened. Let's see if we can take a look back at what happened to Top Bodine coming off turn number two. He was mired in some pretty heavy traffic. There he is, right there, the 33 of Ron Hornaday, right behind him. Looks like the thing just took off and he got loose coming off the corner. And he, he laid in that gas too, Phil. You know, he, he just tried to battle the truck without letting off. You see him gaining ground on Hornaday, just scraping through the inside of the. Yeah, you, there you saw the sparks right there. So I'm sure he just kissed the inside wall. There's another view right there. There's Tidy, just got a little bit loose, got back on the throttle, kept it out of the outside wall, shot it across the racetrack and watched the driving. You, know, you never give up on these things, do you, Michael? Not until you hit. And look, you just, oh, he hit it pretty good. 
how come it's not damaged anymore? <laughs> That's a tough Toyota truck. That's exactly. Now you can hear him right up to when he lost traction. He was wide open in that gas, pulling away from Hornaday. But let's listen to the contact from inside. Back in the throttle, trying to stay out of the inside. Well, that's the key. You never give up on this thing till till you hit something or till you miss it all. There is not a lot of damage there. I don't think he hit that inside wall very hard at all. Well, it looked like to me he did. We saw the sparks. His crew's going to take a look at it. He'll bring that down on pit road. Aaron's lucky dog goes to the 75 of Dennis Setzer. He will be back on the lead lap. That means 24 now on the lead lap at Kentucky. Coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed is brought to you by Just for Men. Stay in the game with Just for Men hair color. By the official tools of NASCAR, Craftsman, and by Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership. Nobody beats Aaron's, nobody. Fast and all fast start for race here at Kentucky Speedway. John Wood starting this race in the 30th position has moved up to 16th, but he's done it in a very unconventional way. Been a little bit eventful for him. Yeah. I bet you he, uh, he could be further up if he didn't spin out. <laughs> it must be really fast. Fast and all fast start for Good. John Wood. Ready. Green, green, green. Green flag back again for the Kentucky Speedway. Mike Skinner still out in front of the field. Now it's Travis Quapple that's right on his tailgate, his back bumper. And Quapple has had some good see. starts. Let's see if he takes him to the outside. Looks like he's going to look high. Ryan Matthews had another difficult start. He backed the field back up there about 10, 12 truck lengths behind right now, the fourth position. There you see Matthews on the high side, Eric Darnell. But once he gets down the back straightaway, he gets up to speed. It's, like, it's almost like there's a transmission problem, and, he, and he's having to take off in third gear instead of second gear. It looks like that. His, his truck looks a lot like Fireball Roberts' car used to. I like really seeing that. Yeah. Smokey Unix, yeah. Pontiac back there in the, in the early 60s. Three wide as they were going into turn number one. We're seeing a lot of two and three wide racing all the way around this racetrack. A yeah, very raceable racetrack you see right there in the middle of our screen. That's the 10 of David Starr. Here comes Jack Sprague bringing Mac Craft in the 88 with him. Here comes John Wood passing Johnny Benson in the 23. John Wood John continuing to move forward in that fast and all fast start. He took that spin, Ray, and it looked like it woke him up or something. Yeah, you know what, Michael? A couple things I want to update you about down here on pit road. Johnny Benson had to come back down pit road to tighten up lug nuts. They weren't sure where they were loose, but he said he had a pretty serious vibration. So he rolled down pit road to do that. And while we were in our last commercial, Todd Bodine also came in for four tires and an adjustment. Of course, he had him flat side spotted from that last spin. And we talked to Mike Skinner during that break, Phil, and he was genuinely concerned about what that truck would do when he put four tires on it. He said in the past, you know, we've changed tires. He also said, we don't know how to adjust this coal bind setup. We don't know what to do to it to make it better. So we told him not to do anything. And I think he's breathing a little bit easier right now. He's been able to drive back away from the field. Look at this battle. Wow, Matt Crafton got very loose there as Sprague was going by him. And now Ted Musgrave moves by Travis Quapple. Musgrave back into second. Yeah, Mike Skinner may have that nine of Ted Musgrave to to deal with here in just a moment. There's the one of David Green. He's being shown in the fourth position. That's Travis Quapple's K&N on board right there. Adam. Well, you talk about Travis Quapple dropping back to third in the running order, and one of the reasons is he continues to have a hard time turning that truck. That's what he complained about on that first run. They made a wedge and air pressure adjustment. He said the truck is no better, and on top of being tight, he says no grip in turn three. Struggling woes for Travis Quapple. Well, and everyone's struggling in turn three right now, it seems like. Everybody but Mike Skinner. Yeah, Travis goes way wide coming off four. Going to open up the bottom of the racetrack for David Green. There's Mike Skinner, our leader right there. He's opened up about a second half lead right now on the nine of Ted Musgrave. That's the guy we talked about didn't want to work on his truck. and We suggested that he not do that. He, he will probably give us credit <laughs> if he wins this race for well, yeah. that advice. I we've, think. we've helped Richie Waters. We've done a lot of good things up here from the booth that the guys down on pit road appreciate. Look at look at Matthews getting ready to take that fourth position away from David Green. Yeah, he's not afraid to use that outside in that truck either end of the racetrack. What a strong performance for Ryan Matthews tonight as he grabs his first ever pole in NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Has had a little bit of difficulty in his restarts, but boy, once he gets going, he is really strong. Yeah, it, it looks like he's maybe taken off in third gear. Most of these trucks will take off in second gear, and he has really been off on each and every start and restart. There's David Green going to. 
try to ward off the challenges of the 99 of Eric Lanelli. He's going right to the outside to try to take over the sixth position. And you can see Matthews right there in the corner of your screen. He's trying to do the same thing. He tried to get on the outside of Quapwell, couldn't make it. Dove to the inside. Now he likes the outside better. <laughs> well, the Quapel keeps closing the door wherever he goes. Now back to the high side. Ryan Matthews trying to take away that position from Quapel. Ryan Matthews sort of came out of nowhere, didn't he? He really did. Had some ARCA starts last year. He had a couple top fives in the ARCA series, and Bill Davis just jumped on him and said, you're our guy. We're going to give you a ch chance to do a couple of races, and then they did such a good job. They gave him some more races, and he had his career best finish last last time out at Memphis and finished sixth. You know, it kind of reminds you of uh, Chad McCombie. You give a guy a chance, he just keeps on clicking off them top 15, top, top 12 runs, and then eventually they learn what they're doing, and you see them running up front like Ryan's doing tonight. Yeah, going for that position on Travis Quabble, going for the third spot. He's got a fender up alongside. Now he's going to beat him down into turn number three. So that is the race for third, and Ryan Matthews takes it back over. Ray Dunlap, what's going on with Ron Hornaday? Well, you know, Rick, earlier tonight he started back in 21st, and we've heard him on the radio a lot saying, I'm really, really tight in the middle. So throughout the course of the night, he's had to aim his truck from the end of the corner down to the bottom. And moments ago, we listened in on his radio. No idea. This thing has just got no grip on all four tires. It just it kind of does what it wants to do. And then it lands. You can you can get it down and drive it. Yeah, I'm writing. I'm writing all this down, Ron, so we can figure out what the deal is. If you got to pull shocks off in the front or whatever we got to do to get this thing down. I'd... And of course, we know that Hornaday won here a year ago, starting deep in the field all the way back in 22nd. So it is possible to do that, but he has moved up to about 12th right now and not able to move any further forward in the field so far this evening. You know, so much changes. We have a little different left side tire here this year than we had last year. And, you know, just sometimes we just have to throw the notes out because everything changes so fast here in NASCAR in the truck series here. And it's, it's unseasonably cool from Kentucky this time of year. That changes things as well. Mike Skinner, it's the fourth race of 2007. He has led the most laps. He won at two of them earlier, Atlanta and Martinsville. We'll see if he can do that here tonight at Kentucky. Powered by Castrol Syntec. For maximum power, great cars want more than just oil. Give them Castrol Syntec. Official. Race Day fans, we're looking for your photos. Show us your colors of speed for a chance to see yourself on race day. We'll select the best photo each week and show it on air. It's all part of My Race Day. Upload your photos to SpeedTV.com. Keyword My Race Day now. That's going to be a big night. Absolutely. Mike Skinner's having a big night right now. He is. He's catching R Brian Silas. I believe Brian was your spotlight driver, wasn't he? Yeah, I know him now. Take a look at our race summary as we've completed 90 laps that have taken place here. There's been five different drivers that have been out front. They've changed the lead seven times. Five cautions as well, and five are out of the race. And, oh, by the way, Mike Skinner's number is? Five. I think that might be a theme tonight. Well, first, I think would be the theme from the, for the five <laughs> of Mike Skinner. Yeah. Because he's been first just about this entire race. Adam Alexander, what's going on with Joey Clinton? Not a lot, and that's a good thing. He's been very quiet on the radio, satisfied with his truck. You know, Rick, this team started the year, ran sixth at Daytona, came back with a tenth a couple of weeks later in Atlanta with Joey in the truck, and have not been in the top ten since. Started ninth tonight. He has stayed in the top ten. They feel very good about the performance of this truck. And what about Bill Lester? He, too, started the season with a bang. Eleventh in the season opener at Daytona, but they hadn't gotten a sniff of the top ten till a twelfth last week at Memphis. That momentum is carried over. He qualified on the the outside of the front row and currently riding 10th looking for his first top 10 of 2007. That team is also looking for some additional sponsorship to get through the season. See we've got they've got Bowen on the truck right here. There's Mike Skinner our leader again and some laptop. That's Jason White in the Hooters Energy Drink. Number seven. There's a battle right there. The 99 and the 22 are going at it again for the third position. Ooh, a little wiggle right there by Eric Oh, Arnell. big wiggle. 
Darnell chases it up the racetrack, and while he's doing that, the 22 of Ryan Matthews goes right back by him. Look how much momentum you lose when you get when you get a little bit loose and, have, and wiggle have to chase that truck. You get out of the throttle, and he's lost 10, 12 truck lengths to the 22 of Ryan Matthews. We're here at the NASCAR is taking a closer look at the 33. They think there might be a little smoke coming out of that truck. I've been watching them. I haven't seen anything that would be would constitute a black flag. I don't think. Ray, what's going on? Uh, guys, Rick oh, Carell. There's the problem with Eric Darnell and the 99. We saw him get loose earlier. Now into the wall. The caution comes out once again. Hard, hard contact for Eric Darnell. See, both left side tires appear to be flat right now. See, Eric kicked the window net down. That's a great sign. But look at the damage to the right front of that northern tool and equipment forward. Looked like he jumped out of there like he wasn't happy about something. Yeah, awfully glad to see Eric get out of that truck. Boy, I just can't say enough about these safer walls. Adam, what went on with Eric? He was talking about a tire going down. He had backed way off the pace. Ryan Matthews had passed him on the track, and then you guys saw the result. Tough break for Eric Darnell, who was looking for his first back-to-back -to -back top 10s of the season. Kid. This is a couple laps ago when we saw the 99 of Eric Darnell wiggle when, when he was racing with the 22 of Ryan Matthews. Watch, he gets down here in, in turn number one. You see it loose. He had to chase the truck up the hill. Ryan was able to get by, and the very next time he came around to this to this corner. Watch again now. Oh, he, right rear just, right or left rear one yeah. just blew out on the straightaway. Yeah, one of the rear tires blew out because he wasn't even really to the corner yet when that truck swapped ends. Can't really tell which one right there, but that's just how it goes. If you blow it, that's, that's, he's got the gas wide open. When the tire blows, and it just turns the truck around. Yeah, there's. This is Travis Quaffle right here. You see the 99 of Eric. It just turns sideways completely. Watch, Travis is going to try to snake by on the outside. Just barely avoids his teammate. I bet you my man Brian Silas just soon got away from them too. He saw all kinds of stuff with the, when he was running with those guys. Stuff he wasn't wanting to see. So the safety crews are out there on the racetrack now. Getting the 99 off of the racetrack, Adam. And as we talk about the 99 on the racetrack, let's talk on pit road. Mike Skinner is in, four tires and fuel. Jeff Hensley, the crew chief, reminded these guys, just like last time, make it smooth. Meanwhile, Travis Quapple is in. He's been tight on the racetrack, four tires, fuel. They're gonna make a track bar adjustment. He also will pull away. Both can go the distance from here, Ray. A real small track bar adjustment for Ted Musgrave on his Team ASE Toyota, down just a half around. He's a little bit loose going into the center of the corner. Now, Ryan Matthews comes in running third they're going to take two pounds out of the left rear that's going to help loosen up his truck a little bit matthews has pit stall number one but it looks like he will not be the first one off of pit road it's going to be the 30 of the onion top 09 is going to win the battle off pit road i think there was some pit strategy there with the 30 and the 77 both of those guys coming out in front of the five of mike skinner so we'll see what they did on pit road and find out what's going to happen at the end of this race as we're closing in on the final laps. You know, each week when the teams come to the racetrack, it's important for them to set up their scales on an exactly level playing field. Now, no race shop or no track has this perfect spot that's level. So these scales are adjustable. And what the teams need is a really good level to make sure that all four scales are level to each other. And that's why I recommend Craftsman's brand new 24-inch multi-purpose laser level. This thing has a lot of cool features. It's got a horizontal plumb bob and also a vertical one, so you can work on things like door frames. But this is a neat new feature. It has a 24-inch ruler right on the laser level. Now, what the teams will do is they'll get their first scale set up and you gotta get adjusted perfectly. So this thing is digital and it'll show you right whenever you're on the right spot. Now I've got it perfectly level now, but it's not hard to get this thing out of level by just turning the screw jack a couple of times. So the teams will be able to do that, get this one level, and then what they'll do is they'll turn on the laser and the laser will shine right back at all the other scales and that way they know that all four are lined up perfectly. This thing's pretty cool. It also has a beeper on it to tell you exactly when it's zero level, 45 degrees, or 90. Check out this Craftsman Tools of the Trade. Another great programming on speed on demand. 
Good crowd on hand here at Kentucky Speedway once again. We heard about 45,000 ticket crowd. sales. Great crowd. I love this racetrack. I do too. Ray Dunlap, what's going on with Todd Bodine? Well, they don't have any tires down here in the pit area, guys, because when they spun that last time, they took those tires to Goodyear to try to get, or the wheels, to get new tires mounted. So at lap 71, they ran out of tires. So he pitted this last time on lap 96, and that's why he was able to get out first. All they had to do was put fuel in that lumber liquidator's Toyota. They had no tires to put on the thing. We're hearing that Brendan Gaughan used pit strategy as well came in and just got two tires and so he came out he said in second but Ryan Matthews is saying well wait a minute I think I'm in front of you and it looks like NASCAR agrees with Matthews now it'll be interesting to see if he can get a better start this time Phil yeah I tell you he hasn't had a good one this entire not, race not yet maybe there's something with the transmission going on or maybe maybe we'll see what happens this time you know Brandon Gaughan did the same thing at uh, California didn't he got two tires late parlayed it into a uh, where were we at Michigan he got two tires late in the going and yeah, tried to and and try to finish in second. Exactly. With a tried great to win run. the race and almost did. Yeah. Yeah, Coming to the green third. flag, and it's Todd Bodine leading with the green flag. Ryan Matthews again struggling on the restart. Let's see if Brendan Gaughan will make his way on the outside of him in turn number one. Gone with the momentum on the high side. He tries to take second away as they go down the back stretch. And you can hear, you remember Mike Skinner talking about how friendly that uh, clean air was? He doesn't have it now. This is the first time he's really, since the very early laps, that he's been around some trucks. Ooh, that 22 got really loose on the bottom of the racetrack. He caught it, allowed the five and the six to get by him on the outside. Here comes the one of David Green and the 88 of Matt Crafton. Another strong run for Crafton. He always seems to wind up around the top 10 late in the going. Look David. at Brendan go way up the racetrack looking for the outside on top. And uh, Mike says, yeah, do that again. <laughs> yeah, one more time and I'm by you. Here comes Mike looking on the inside now. Brendan gone as we're riding along with Todd Bodine. Bodine leading this race. Doesn't appear that that, uh, that air is messing up Skinner at all. He's able to pin that thing to the bottom. Drive underneath Brendan gone. Brendan's been driving it in very, very hard on the outside. Let's see if he does it again. He does, but if Mike Skinner can get back to the throttle and he's not able to pull away from Brendan Gaughan. Brendan actually gets the advantage coming off the corner. Brendan Gaughan strong through one and two that last time. He's trying to reel in that 30 all the time. Mike Skinner's trying to get on the inside of Gaughan and take second away. Yeah, Brendan really isn't as good down here in three and four as he is in one and two. When he goes up the racetrack, that allows the five of Mike Skinner to get down beneath him. But when he gets down in one and two, he can really make some time on the outside. Let's see if he does it again. Oh, he drove in a little too hard, Phil. Got up the hill. Running that second groove, still bouncing around a little bit. Skinner's going to take second away, though. So Gaughan drops back to third. Right behind him, that's Travis Quaffle in the number six. Lost too much ground in three and four. When he got to one and two, he had to run in deeper. Thing pushed up the hill, and he could not get it turned back to the left. Sport have separated themselves. And then fifth is David Green. Now, David Green trying to improve on a career best finish in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series of eighth way back in 1997. Yeah, it was about 25 years ago, something like that. <laughs> but he's doing a great job. Out here there's a battle for the lead Mike Skinner on the bottom Skinner looking to the inside that's down the back stretch going into turn number three Skinner will take over the top spot once again and remember Mike Skinner has four fresh tires top out nine put his last set of tires on on lap number 71 Adam Alexander is Mike Skinner comfortable out there well, I think he's comfortable right now because he got around the two trucks in front of them that they were a little bit concerned about. Reason why they didn't have tires on those, and so they felt like they needed to be careful driving around both Bodine and Brendan Gone. But when Jeff Hensley, the crew chief, relayed to Mike Skinner and said those guys didn't get four tires on that last stop, Mike Skinner said, I don't think that matters. We just need top fives. And Jeff Hensley reminded everybody to stay focused, including driver Mike Skinner. And I think he's doing that out front with 45 to go. Adam, that entire team has had focus since the very drop of the green flag at Daytona. Never out of the top ten. What an incredible season they have had thus far. And he's looking to make it 13 races in a row with top ten finishes. Brennan gone way up high. That time he's going to lose some spots. Well, Todd ran him way up high. Todd's truck slipped up the hill, and he had to... Brendan had to, to chase his truck up the hill, and Todd had to go up into the white stuff to, to miss uh, 
have those two not make contact. In the meantime, Travis Quapple's driven around him, and here comes David Green trying to do the same thing. Three wide at the front straightaway. Three wide as they go across the start finish line, and Todd Bodine's going to move back. Brendan Gaughan trying to move forward. David Green on the inside. He's trying to hang on. Ted Musgrave was back there telling me, give me some room. <laughs> Ted Musgrave taking a little bit of a backseat view to this race going on in front of him. But how about the run for Musgrave here? He is really strong tonight. He sure is. He's been up in the top five just about the entire race. Once we got underway, now he's in the fourth position. I think the second best truck, Phil, now has got to the second spot. Quapple got around Green, Bodine, and, and gone. And now he's going to try to search search the groove out, figure out if there's any way he can keep up with Mike Skinner. No one else has been able to. And Travis Quapple, our most recent winner in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series two weeks ago in Memphis. He was able to take that win away from Brad Keselowski. And so he's trying to build on that momentum tonight. That was two out of the last three races that Travis Quapple was able to win. He won at Michigan three races ago and then won our last time out in Memphis. Ted Musgrave all over the back bumper now of David Green. That will be a battle for the fourth position. Look at Ted on the outside. Gets a good run through the center of the corner. So Musgrave looks to the outside. Now ducks to the inside again for fourth. Musgrave trying to take it away from David Green. David Green's going to hold it down there. Hold Ted down. He gets a little bit loose down there when those trucks are so close together. Generally, it's easier to make it through one and two on the bottom, it seems. So maybe when they get down into turn one, well, David, let him go right there. That's what a veteran will do. It's you, you make better time if you're not side by side. He saw the writing on the wall, let Ted go, so that that guy doesn't drive so far away from him. Well, we've seen plenty of side-by-side -side racing, but it's all been behind the five of Mike Skinner. Skinner dominating at Kentucky. Brendan gone running comfortably in the top five pretty much the entire race now has a problem with the left front tire he brings it on to pit road and this will end his chances of winning tonight. Tough tough break for that South Point Chevrolet team Brendan had a good run going a little pit strategy but unfortunately left front tire flat Mike Skinner continues to lead with about a two and a half a two and a half second lead over the number six of Travis Quapple. We saw the pit strategy there they tried the two tire change and obviously that's come back to bite him. We could have run over something that may not have been because he stayed out and didn't put left side tires on. But a tough break nonetheless. Mike Skinner over two second lead on Travis Quapple now. Ted Musgrave running in third. David Green and John Wood in the top five. Yeah, what a great run for John Wood. What a great comeback. That's his teammate right behind him. The zero nine of Joy Clanton going to make a comeback here. He's been out about five or six weeks. Out of the out of the bush car and he's doing a great job here in this Bubba Burger truck Adam and it's been a wild night for Wood who started 30th drove his way into the top 15 had the spin had to pit at lap 65 lost track position there but when he did he got four fresh sticker tires they were able to put those on on this last pit stop at lap 96 he sees Joey Clanton growing in his rearview mirror but not a bad return to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series for John Wood from 30th to 6th with just around 30 laps to go, right? Well, not only a tough break for Brendan Gaughan having that flat tire, but once he got to the pits, the truck fell off the jack, and they had to try to lift the truck back up, get it jacked up to get those left side tires on. So a very lengthy pit stop here. He's going to go down probably two or three laps during that pit stop. There's that 15 Chevrolet right there. Bill Lester. He's got a great run going. He's being shown in the eighth position looking for that first top 10 this year. I think Adam told us earlier that Bill had an 11th place finish at Daytona first race this year and back to 12th last week or last last time out at Memphis for his second best finish of the year. But uh, looks to be a possible top 10 for Bill Lester here tonight. Side by side racing Todd Bodine. Pod outside continues, of Mike Bliss continues to fall back through the top 10 Rick without the advantage of putting on those tires caution comes out now though he's gonna come get them right yeah if he's got the tires mounted and in the pits then he'll come and get them and he more than likely will be the only team with tires left so uh, but he needs it pretty quick he yes. needs some more time 
to use those new tires. Yeah, he's going to fall back through the field. There's two ways to look at it, though, Phil. Skinner's coming up on the back of the pack. He continues to put trucks a lap down. When Todd comes in and gets his tires, he won't have so many people he'll have to pass. So right. he does need it soon. But but being when I say that, maybe in the next 15 or 20 laps, he can still take advantage of those new tires. Now Mike Skinner closing in on the tailgate of Rick Crawford. That team working very diligently to get that 14 back out onto the racetrack just so he can continue to make laps. Again, Rick Skinner coming, or <laughs> Rick Crawford coming into this race in the fifth position in points. And so he's out there trying to make some laps and make sure he doesn't lose too many spots in the point standing. He's already gained a couple of spots because of returning to the track. And he'll continue to do that. There's a couple more cats he can catch. Another lap or two, he'll take over uh, the 31st spot from Pete Shepard. Inside of 30 laps, now 28 laps to go. Mike Skinner still dominating out in front of this field. At the beginning of the show, we shined a spotlight on a few different drivers. Let's see how they're doing. Ray Dunlap, how's Brandon Miller doing? Well, he's doing pretty well, actually, Rick. He's in 20th position, so they have improved from their qualifying spot. They started in 28th, but Brandon's truck is just way too tight in the center of the corners. They've made air pressure adjustments on the right front two different times tonight, but the truck is still too tight for him. He's about 24 seconds off of the lead. Adam? I talked to Ryan Matthews before his qualifying run earlier tonight, and I said, how's the truck? He kind of shook his head and said, so-so. He went out, stuck it on the pole. First time in his career he had done that. He struggled on restarts tonight, but seems to be very good on the long run. Running seventh with 25 plus laps to go. I think a top five, not out of the realm of the possible out of possibility of him. It would be his first top five finish of his young career. Phil. You know, Adam, the zero sum of uh, Tim Sauter started in the 26th position and he's currently running in the 26th position in the Luster Builder Chevrolet looking for a better night tonight. But unfortunately, he's not going to get ahead of his career best finish last time out at Memphis finished in the 11th position. It looks like it's not going to happen here, but a top 20 finish is not uh, is that out of the realm of possibility for Tim Sauter and the 07? My Brian, Brian Silas is running 25th right now. He told me before the race started, Phil, he just wants to make every lap that he possibly can, learn all that he can, and use this experience to, to help him not only perform better in the ARCA series, but then look forward to the other stars he's going to make in the truck series this year. So, so far for Brian Silas, I'd say everything's right on target. Thank you for the, those spotlight updates. Mike Skinner still leading this field under probably the brightest spotlight right now. The light shining down on Kentucky Speedway. Let's take a look at tonight's stay in the game with just for men moment. And this is why they had to stay in the game. The 14 of Rick Crawford early on in this race, lap 11, got into the wall. A lot of damage to that truck and the team went to work pounding out the damage. And now Rick Crawford back out on the racetrack trying to get some laps in so that it's a little better finishing position. Stay in the game with Just For Men hair color. We're able to ride along with Rick Crawford with that Harley Davidson camera on board with him. They're going to be a disappointing night for Rick Crawford though. All Again. Runs well here. The Kentucky finished second last year and unfortunately we saw what happened to him early on in the race but uh, the guys kept digging and got it back out on the racetrack. Yeah. It, it, 28 in Memphis the last race out so a couple disappointing finishes for the number 14 team once again. You're the five out in front of Travis Quapple. Quapple running in the second position but he's three and a half seconds behind Mike Skinner. Skinner's dominated this race 115 of the 130 laps that have been run so far Skinner has been in front. He's going to really come to like that coal bond setup that he's never been a fan of. Just have to compliment that crew to go somewhere, figure it out, and then he figured it out at Iowa and brought it to Kentucky, and much to their surprise, it actually worked. And they never had done it before. And here they are leading the points. They've had a terrific season, as well as the six of Travis Quabble, and, uh, and they changed something, something they hadn't done all year, and they were leading the race by three and a half seconds, maybe four seconds. But Travis Quapple, again, winner of two of the last three races, came oh so close at Daytona this year. Rick gave him the win when we, he was inside of the <laughs> I tried to. finish line. 
and unfortunately we, we, finished third. We took it back from him. This, <laughs> the guy coming in behind him, though, Ted Musgrave, is on a move. He's run down the sixth truck and looks like he's faster than than uh, Travis right now. So uh, Musgrave is going to try to fight his way past Quapple in the second. Yeah, Ted Musgrave, nine, I'm sorry, that Rick, that nine truck was been fast all day yesterday in practice, and then obviously had a good top ten run in qualifying and has a great run going here tonight. Back in the fourth spot, it's David Green in that number one. He has had a very strong performance tonight, getting back into the truck since, well, 10 years ago. Back in 1997, he finished eighth at Nazareth. And so he is really putting on a, a strong performance, and he's going to be in the truck for the remainder of the 2007 yeah, season. Yeah, that'll be a great addition to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And this is a guy that I am really tickled that he's having a good run. John Wood here, been out of a truck or a car for six or seven weeks now and doing a great job here running in the top five. Just think how fortunate he is. He did a 360 down in turn three and four and didn't hit anything. Now he's getting to celebrate this uh, this night by running in the top five late in the going. It could have all went away halfway through the race. And his teammate has had a great view of what John Wood has been able to do. Joey Clanton currently running in the sixth spot. Adam Alexander. It has been a solid night for Joey Clanton. Another good night as well for David Starr. You guys talked about the struggles of Rick Crawford in the last few races with bad luck, but Starr has picked it up for a team that was thrown together in January. This team catching stride, running 12th here tonight, and if they stay there, it would be the fifth consecutive race. This team has finished 13th or better, and they're doing it here tonight with a truck that took them to a fifth-place finish earlier this season at Texas. That was Starr's best run of the year, right? Well, not a very good night for Johnny Benson tonight. He has not been happy with his Toyota. He says that it feels like something is broken or bent. They may have a shock mount that is bent, or it may be something in the suspension. But Johnny says he goes down into the center of the corner, and the truck won't do anything that he wants it to do. If he tries to cut it real hard, it tries to slide up the racetrack. If he tries to diamond, it just doesn't go where he wants it. So they believe they have a problem internally on that race truck but he started 11th and currently running in 14th so not a good night for jb ill handling for johnny benson but just the opposite for mike skinner it looks like nothing could go wrong for skinner inside of 15 laps to go before he may see his fourth checkered flag of the season Welcome back to the Bill Ford Tough 225, presented by the Greater Cincinnati Ford Dealers. Kentucky Speedway, Mike Skinner out in front of this field. Mike Skinner, in his first 12 races of this year, has averaged a finishing position of 3.75, and that is the best in the history of the truck series. Ron Hornaday's was second best back in 1996, and it was about 3.8, just a little bit worse than Mike Skinner. But what a consistent season so far for the first half for Mike Skinner and this Bill Davis team. And I'm all I'm also going to have to tell you, it has to be a record. The first four cars qualified, four yeah. trucks, excuse me, qualified within seven thousandths of a second of one another. It has it's to very be amazing. Record. has to be a record. I'm going to give it to you. And I'm also going to give Ryan Matthews the fourth position in front of John no, Wood. Yeah, the fifth position fair. in front of John Wood. You, you might try to give him fourth, <laughs> but we're going to only give him fifth. But uh, And you actually didn't give him anything because he passed John Wood himself. You meant give him credit. Well, I feel like I'm giving him something that I mentioned. Battle for second. Looks as though it's going to heat up as we close in. Ten laps of racing to go. Travis Quapple trying to hold on to second, but Ted Musgrave continues to reel him in. These trucks are pretty evenly matched, Michael. They've been running together for the last probably eight or ten laps just like this. Todd Bodine's running back in the 11th spot, Phil. We know he has four tires set in his pit. There's only 13. 14 trucks on the lead lap. If the caution were to fly right now, he's running 11. He'll come get those tires and see where he can go. Yeah, he, he, he will be willing to roll the dice. He would only give up three positions, come and get fresh tires. The problem is, though, it would depends on how long it would take to clean up the race track and get ready to restart. Five and a half seconds, the differential between Mike Skinner and Travis Quaffle right now. We were just talking about Todd Bodine and how he has slid back from starting, restarting this race up the front of the field. Now he's dropped back to 11th, right? Well, and Rick, here's the deal. Right here sits those stickers, just like Michael was saying, right here in the pits. And these guys are going to have these sitting here. And at the end of the day, they're going to take them back to Goodyear and they'll drill a hole in the side of this one. And these tires will be no good. Todd and the team sure would have loved to have been able to put these on about 25 laps ago. Tell him to hold out hope, Ray. Maybe we can get him on here in a lap or two and see a show out of Todd at the end. 
Seven laps of racing remaining, and now it's heating up for the battle for second. Travis Quaffle, Ted Musgrave, Musgrave trying to get by that number six. Pretty heavy traffic right there. They've got the double zero with Josh Wise to negotiate. Musgrave's right on his tailgate. Quaffle looking to the inside of Josh Wise. Musgrave's going to go by him as well. This is for second. Again, out in front of these two is Mike Skinner. Five and a half seconds out in front of those two. It looks like every time Musgrave gets right on his back bumper, <laughs> Travis goes, well, I better get going a little bit more. Well, and you can see Ted's able to hold that thing right down against the white line when he's a couple of truck lengths off of him. When he gets right up on him, might create a little bit of a push in the front end of that nine truck, and he can't get it done. But I have noticed him he's starting to peak to the high side, too. He's trying every angle he can to make this move on the six truck, but hadn't happened yet. There's a good battle right there. There's the one of David Green. He's running fourth, the 22 of Ryan Matthews. Look how much ground he gained through the center of the corner. And he's just going to flip around to the outside. I like that kid. He just, if they're down low, I'm going to go up high. We'll work it out when we get there. That's right. David's going to give him a little bit of room. Let's see what Ryan can do on the outside. Do one and two. He's going to drive up beside him. This is for fourth. Ryan Matthews tries to take it away from veteran David Green. And he took it away from him. Great run for Ryan Matthews, the second running the second place truck right now. He actually is running fourth, but out of the Bill Davis stable. I wonder if he's got that same coal mine setup that Skinner has that they made a might have learned about it at Iowa and put it in both trucks. He set on the pole and he's running strong, so you'd have to think they maybe are set up a lot like. Here we go again. Four laps of racing to go. Ted Musgrave really wants that second spot. He's all over Travis Quapple now. These guys are having a heck of a battle. We haven't forgotten about Mike Skinner. He does continue to lead, but he's so far ahead, our camera won't fit him in here. <laughs> well, just remember, Phil, every there now and then, the Atlanta Braves win 13 to 2. Every sports match doesn't come down to a nail-biting finish. But in NASCAR, you just sit on the edge of your seat wondering, will the, will the yellow flag fall late? See a green-white checkered. What's going to happen between Musgrave and Quapple? In this situation, you just have to think, well, the crew chief, the team, the driver, they have really all clicked on all cylinders this weekend. All year. Well, all year, but, I mean, when he dominates a race like this, he has led so many laps of the 150 that we're running, it just seems like nobody's even been in the same class. Well, we saw Eric Darnell drive off from him at Kansas City. Seems like sometimes at a flat mile-and-a-half track, one guy can get it tuned up, and he drives away from everyone. That's why I think bank tracks or, or bumpy tracks, they help keep things tighter because people just can't get that dead perfect setup. The last time by the start-finish line, those two were separated by just two-tenths of a second. He doesn't have much time to go. Mike Skinner takes the white flag. One lap of racing to go for Skinner. Does Quapple and Musgrave have enough time to settle who's going to finish second? It's good news for Mike Skinner. Even if something happens right now and the caution comes out, we will not go to a green-white checker because he has started the last lap. All he has to do is make it back, Phil. Again, Mike Skinner started this season off with a blaze, finishing fourth at Daytona, then three wins in a row. California, Atlanta, and Martinsville looking to add to his win career number. Mike Skinner will win at Kentucky. Battle, battle for second will be taken by Travis Popple, Ted Musgrave right behind him. Ted Musgrave, an impressive run for him coming back. And Ryan Matthews, talk about impressive. His fourth place finish here tonight after starting on the pole very good and a career best for David Green as he finishes in fifth. How about that? That'll be a, a, sight, a indication of things to come with David Green and that Red Horse Racing team. Yeah, you think you get that cat to Martinsville, Richmond, some of these short tracks, he's going to be right. 23 career wins for Mike Skinner in his 142nd race and the fourth win of 2007. California, Atlanta, and Martinsville adding to that list. Adam Alexander. I don't think the five team left one stone unturned this weekend. Crew Chief Jeff Hensley, that was a dominating performance. Well, <laughs> I tell you, this is our first uh, first deal at Colbine, and we're probably the last last con you know to convert over. But uh, we went to Iowa last week and tested. Daddy, I told you it was going to be big. I told him last week at the house. I said, you know, we go to Kentucky and this thing does like it did out there. They're going to live a hard life, and they did. And you know, Mike did a hell of a job tonight. I mean, the thing just drove good. 
but he didn't overdrive it and learn to adapt. That was the thing when we unloaded here Friday. He said, this thing's pretty good. I just got to learn to drive it. It's a different feel. Man, this thing is awesome. I mean, I just want to say hello to BD and Gail and thanks for everything you do for us. And I mean, this is that's unbelievable. Guys, could you imagine as dominating as this team has been? They actually could get better. They may have here tonight. <laughs> well, it was very impressive performance. We talked about Bill Davis racing. Not only did Mike Skinner have another impressive showing here in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, but his teammate, Ryan Matthews, with a very impressive finish today. He comes back in the fourth position. Checkered flag handed to Mike Skinner. We look at our fast and all fast finish. Skinner, Quaffle, Musgrave, Ryan Matthews, and David Green, your top five at the Kentucky Speedway. Welcome back to Kentucky Speedway. The celebration continues as we go down to Victory Lane and Adam Alexander. And Mike Skinner climbing out after career victory number 23. It comes here at the Kentucky Speedway, and here he is. The guns have fired off. The confetti is flying. It's quite a celebration. Mike Skinner with hugs for everyone. When you talked on the radio after the race, you said tonight it was like taking candy from a baby. How good was this truck, Mike? It was pretty awesome. Uh, that was the first race that we rode on the Springs, and I'm not a big fan of it, but uh, shakes an old man up a lot. It's real rough in there and stuff, but... Uh, these races aren't that long, so we we made it. It's all good. Talk about coil bonding and what the learning curve was for you this weekend, over 50 years old and going back to the textbook. <laughs> going back to what these going back to what these kids have been beating us with. And uh, you know, uh, this is for my new grandson Bristol and uh, my son Jamie and his wife Kelly. Toyota. Bill Davis and Gail Davis for letting me uh, have the pleasure of driving this awesome truck. And Jeff Hensley, it's my brother-in-law's birthday tonight. Happy 50, Randy. Check it out. Is there any way to put in perspective how dominant you and this team have been this season, Mike? Well, you know, we've been getting our butt whipped, but we've been steady. We've just been trying to run the top five and top ten. And uh, that's what our strategy is for the rest of the year. And actually, that strategy started in Daytona. But... Uh, you know, it was a great, great night, and there's a lot of people that's helped us out. Uh, you know, Easy Go, M Maui Jim, um, Justin Boots have been awesome to us, and uh, Taylor Made Golf Clubs have been helping us out a little bit. It's, it was a great night. Uh, Bosch, Vaveline, TRD, everybody, man. Toyotas are awesome. Fourth win of the season, 11th top five in 13 races. I would say they're hotter than a firecracker, Ray. Well, let's hear from Travis Quapo. He had a great night tonight, too. You finished second tonight. Anything you'd like to have done differently to have a shot at winning this race? I don't know. I mean, we we got it to where we were pretty good in practice, but we really hit on some stuff late in practice to get our K&N forward running fast. I wish we just had a little more practice time to tune on it. We were tight. Uh, we tried freeing it up for that second run. Just got me too loose, lost some positions. Tightened it back up to where we started the race with, and um, it was okay. You know, the five truck just really kicked our tail tonight, and, uh, we were just off a little bit, you know. We were, we were right there with, you know, another group of three or four trucks. But, you know, I'm just happy for everybody on the Roush Fenway team. They, we've really been on a strong roll this week, and um, kind of a letdown to finish second, you know, after the after the last couple of weeks we've had. So, just really proud of KNN and everybody involved to help us out. Travis, there was like five or six races there where you guys couldn't finish better than 13th, and all of a sudden you're in the top four every week. What was the difference? Well, I just it takes a little time to kind of, you know figure these trucks out again you know we, we got a new aero package from what they had last year and the, this whole coil bind setup everybody's doing is so much different so it takes a little time to work through that stuff and you know i've never never worked with mike and these guys before either so uh, i just took us a little time to get everything kind of worked out and uh luckily that you know they, they listened to me and eric earlier in the year and told us we were telling them what the trucks were doing and they cut them up got them got them in the wind tunnel and tuned them up for us and uh you know just just really working together with our teams the bush teams the whole rush fenway organization is working great and uh Got our K&N Ford up front. All right, congratulations. That's a second place run tonight for Travis Quapo in the sixth truck. 
Look at the unofficial results, the top 10 here. Mike Skinner now 23 career wins in front of him in the list, 28 for Jack Sprague. So he continues to close in on that, that second spot. What a good job by Ryan Matthews, though. Best career finish of fourth. We'll be back with more from Kentucky after this. In two weeks, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series cranks the summer into high gear with racing at O'Reilly Raceway Park. No one has ever won starting outside the top five, which makes this track a tough one to tame. Will it be a young gun stepping up to the plate and seeing the checkered flag? Or at a short track with so much Truck Series history, will a veteran emerge in victory lane? Join Krista Voda on the setup starting at 7.30 p.m., followed by the green flag live on speed we're going to give you a week to catch your breath but then it's right back into short track racing for the nascar craftsman truck series at o'reilly raceway park in indianapolis the qualifying will be live on speed 4 30 p.m eastern so make sure to tune in for that as we will get you ready for the setup coming on at 7 30 p.m again with chris devoto let's go track side again with ray dunlap well, thank you, Rick. I th certainly think we need to listen to Ted Musgrave. You had a great run tonight, running in third, back up on the wheel, and you had a great night. Yeah, you know, the Jermaine AC Toyota was really good. You know, it was good right from the start, and uh, I just got too far back during the pit stops and burned it up a little bit, but got behind Travis, and that was a good run. I mean, uh, it's good for the guys. I just need a little bit more to catch that five truck and uh, make a one-two Toyota finish, but... Hey, I mean, you know, Solid. we're doing the best we can, and one of these days, ASC will be in victory lane, and uh, we'll kick Skinner out for once. Oh, we wish you would. Now, ORP is next. Is that a racetrack oh. you can win at? Uh, well, it's a racetrack anybody can win at. That's a racetrack much like a Bristol deal. You go in and hope for the best, because small, tight little racetrack, beat and bang. That's right, I'm still in probation, but I'll beat and bang, and uh, I'll try to get up near the front. But, uh, you know, like you say, when you get to ORP, you just hope for the best, and if you get it out of there with a top five finish, that's great. All right, well, good run tonight. That's Ted Musgrave. He finishes third, and how about that guy that was on the pole? He went to the back once and all the way back to the front. Let's hear from him. He's with Adam. Ray, another race, another career best finish for this guy, Ryan Matthews. Congratulations on a good run, but, man, if you'd been able to get the restarts down, you may have been a contender tonight. Yeah, we talked about a lot on the radio, and I tried second gear, I tried third gear, and third gear I could go find but it was out of the power band second gear I just couldn't get any forward bite and I don't know if it's just me or just the tire and maybe the setup we had we did I and mean, we were really really free but that made us good on long runs but you know it was just awesome to get a top five and to get Toyota's 50th pole here and be part of Bill Davis racing um, on a sadder note I'd like to send a prayer out and a dedication to uh, Mary Quay's dad she's the uh, team cook for Bill Davis and uh her dad passed away this past week, unfortunately, so I'd like to say a prayer for him. But Doug Wolcott and everybody, they, uh, you know, we weren't that spectacular yesterday in practice and came out of the box here and got the pole, and you know, we just made a lot of changes overnight and talked about it, and I guess we hit her just right. Career night for Ryan Matthews, and next up we go to O'Reilly Raceway Park where this guy has some experience, raced a late model there just a couple of years ago, guys. We'll go back to short track racing at ORP. Let's take a look at our point standings. Through 13 races, Skinner with a 164-point lead over Hornaday. Hornaday gets another top 10. Struggled early, managed to get a top 10. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed is presented by Ford F-Series. Built for bold moves, built for tough. Brought to you in part by the official tools of NASCAR, Craftsman, and by Edge Products, the leader in performance electronics. Celebration and fireworks continuing for the number five team. Mike Skinner fighting victory lane for the fourth time in 2007. Another very impressive performance tonight was David Green. He's with Ray Dudley. Well, thank you, Rick. You know, David Green has won eight races in the Bush Series, and when you look back on those and compare them to tonight, how are they? Well, there wasn't nothing compared to the effort I had to put in tonight. But before I go any further, I got to say hi to Diane and Austin and Kaylee. I wish they could have been here, but what a great start. I can't thank Tom Deloach and Jeff Hammond and RFMS and Toyota and, and Red Horse Racing for giving me this opportunity, number one. But literally, Ray, yesterday, I just had to learn how to drive this truck. And, and JJ and all the guys really been over and, and welcomed me with open arms to let me learn how to drive the truck. Literally, the truck was so fast. And tonight, I made several mistakes in traffic. And I probably led JJ down the wrong road yesterday just on, on some setup stuff. But what a great way to get back on track. You know, I've been a little, doing a lot of spotting for Brian Vickers and the Red Bull team, and that's that's I enjoy that. 
COT testing and all that, but I really like to be on the racetrack racing. But what a great uh, uh, feeling tonight it was to race with Ted Musgrave and, and, and um, Skinner and all those guys. And we just faltered there at the end, but we hung on for top five and can't wait to go to the rest of them. And this team really deserves it. You know, the misfortune last week, and I got to say our hearts and prayers are out with Aaron and his family. Um, a great kid, a great talent, and uh, hopefully he'll get straightened out here. And hopefully he's proud of us tonight and, and uh, can't thank RFMS enough and Toyota for this effort tonight. All right, good job. That is David Green. He's back in the truck series and a great run for the number one team. Back in his home state, David Green out of Owensboro, Kentucky, with a fifth place finish here at Kentucky. We'll close out the show after these messages. Craftsman Truck Series under the lights once again. Kentucky Speedway here, your unofficial results. Mike Skinner again grabbing his fourth win of 2007. Career win number 23. Todd Bodine struggled, spun out, never could really get going again. Jack Sprague finishes 13th with a backup truck from the very back of the field. Brendan gone early on, looked as though one of the contenders for a win, and after a tire problem, he was relegated back three laps deep. Hard Our crash for Kenny Shepard. Shepard and uh, Terry Cook. Here you see Skinner celebrating the victory. He's getting good at that. Hat dance yeah. for Mike Skinner and big smiles on his face as he continues to celebrate this. Obviously a void coming into this race as we lost our flag man after five years. Dennis James passing away on Wednesday but all smiles for Mike Skinner and that team and a lot of great performances tonight. I mean, I think Ryan Matthews, we've got to point him out as a, a just a stellar performance on the racetrack. Yeah, star on the horizon, I think, Ryan Matthews. Got the pole, ran strong all night, finished in the top five in the fourth spot. And David Green is going to be a nice addition to the series full time. Well, and look at what John Wood and Joey Clanton did in those Wood Brothers trucks, both of them up there. And I love the fact that Bill Lester, Bliss, and then Hornaday battled all night long, got a top 10 finish, keeps those championship hopes alive. Bill Lester with his top eight finish here at Kentucky Speedway. You just got to love the fans here at Kentucky Speedway. They come out and support every event that's here. A great crowd saw a race that uh, Mike Skinner totally dominated. We sure did. We don't normally see that, although we did see Mike Bliss a few years ago dominate the race here at Kentucky Speedway. But uh, I'll tell you, Mike Skinner just had it going. A little bit of a departure from what they've been doing this year, but it worked for him. Two and three wide racing all night long, but it was the one out in front that was the dominant one. Mike Skinner celebrating win number four of 2007, career win 23 from Kentucky Speedway. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.